Today's story is about a girl who, having received a task, got lost in the corridors of the palace, but when she approached the slightly open door, she heard some voices, soft and quiet, that were discussing Asena, the voices said. The bride ran away, and one stern voice answered that she should find her, whatever it takes. Flustered and slightly awkward, the maid tried to comprehend what she had just heard from that very door. As she walked, she clutched the wrapped thing in fabric tighter to herself, rustling slightly with this fabric and squeezing the lying thing tighter and tighter to herself. Abruptly, despite her strong grip, the girl missed the thing made of fabric. It was a beautiful crystal vase, quickly falling to the floor, making a loud sound of broken glass. Hearing the sound of broken glass, someone from behind the door began to scream and ask what that loud noise was. The girl was very scared and confused. The loud beating of her heart could even be heard. Then the realization came that she had been noticed. The door quietly opened with a creak under her awareness of the approach of imminent death, looking at people leaving the room. Three rather handsome men stood at the door, upon seeing whom the maid immediately felt that today would be her last day of life. Their eyes were directed directly at her. Looking at them, the maid remembered who it was, recognizing those standing opposite. The first was the heir of the family of the Marquis of Oviedo, closest to the crown prince, and his name was Terni Akira Oviedo. On the other side of the center was the other closest to the crown prince, and called the Knight of Genius. Diano Shabi Venedetto, and the main one, in the center with a cold and stern look, was the crown prince himself, the only heir of Afenino, Adrian Brisch Keitel van Jekyll Allenson. Frightened and trembling, the maid, looking at him, began to explain that she had simply come on behalf of Her Highness the Princess. But he was little interested in this. With his gaze he wondered who she was, rudely and frighteningly. Almost crying and stuttering, the girl quietly answered that she was from the Rufino's palace, and before she could finish speaking, she was interrupted, demanding only clarity about who she was. Mumble, the girl replied that she was just a maid under the gaze of the guise, feeling a lot of pressure. Rubbing his forehead, the crown prince exhaled, thinking a little, but said that it didn't matter, because she needed to die. Taking out the weapon that was with him, he swung his sword over her with a sharp movement. The frightened maid covered herself with her hands and bent over, afraid of being killed, quietly squeaking in fear. Adrian was quickly stopped by a dark-haired guy, asking him to restrain himself, because if a person dies here, then suspicions will immediately begin. Looking slightly askance and clicking, he understood that his friend was right, and there was no choice left. Lowering the sword closer to herself, the girl looked at him in fear, turning away slightly so that a sharp movement could not hurt her. Although he had put away the weapon, the crown prince asked the girl at what point she began to eavesdrop, and, seeing her hesitation, warned her not to try to deceive him. Crying, she bent slightly and shouted that she'd only heard that his fiancé had run away. Pointing the weapon at her with a threat, he clarified whether this was all she had heard, and the maid added that she had also heard that the bride was a man. All three looked with some disbelief and surprise at her words while she fearfully awaited her fate. Adrian realized that the girl knew too much, saying that this would not work. She needed to be killed, flashing his sword. Without having time to stop him, the maid herself, falling to her knees and bowing, begged to be left alive, that she would do whatever she was told, which puzzled the guys. Coming closer to her, Adrian asked if she agreed to everything, as she herself said, Jumping to her knees, the girl instantly answered yes, because she felt hope for survival, not believing the question of the crown prince who thought about her proposal. Taking her by the cheeks, Adrian examined the girl's face, which puzzled her quite a bit, but the maid was more interested in surviving. Suddenly, the crown prince himself leaned towards her, saying that he was choosing her, and the girl mentally asked herself why she was chosen. Speaking as if to himself, Adrian was assessing her appearance, as if comparing her with someone. Her hair color was similar, and her eyes, like her face, just lie a little, and they would believe him. And her voice, she wouldn't say if something happened, but, so what, something will work out, said the crown prince, surprising the maid a little. Having decided to get involved in his reasoning out loud, the girl asked if he was voicing all this to her, slightly worried. Looking at her, Adrian smiled slyly and said that she would be his bride, and so the girl ended her story of becoming the bride of the crown prince. 
The guys began to study her story, learning that she was Viola Bilbao, a bankrupt aristocrat. Tierney added that the girl really didn't have any particularly unpleasant moments, that she really wasn't to blame for anything. Throwing the papers on the table, Adrian thought, he didn't like the whole situation at all. Looking away, he tried to understand why he should get married at all, because he just wants to kill everyone. So he caught the first Asin he came across and forced him to pretend to be his bride, although he has a good face. But Adrian did not think that he would insist on his the knight's pride and will run away. Imagining his future throne, the crown prince understood that only he would receive the rights to the throne. Everything would end. He just had to be patient until that moment. Looking at Turney, Adrian asked how the search for the escaped Essen was going, to which he confidently replied that Diana was diligently looking for him. Changing the subject, the crown prince asked why his friend was not busy training the girl who became his bride, to which Turney replied that he needed rest. But Adrian urged him to teach her right away, which surprised his friend, to which he replied that this could be done slowly, as the crown prince wanted, but he was more confident, telling his friend to go now. Having shed an absurd tear, he complained that he was given absolutely no rest. Adrian demanded that he take responsibility and prepare the girl so that she could be used. Leaving indignantly, Turney replied that yes, yes, he obeys his highness the crown prince, as if mocking him. The girl felt how the whole world had changed in one night, only she was a former servant, and now the bride of the future heir. Sitting in silence, she was a little tense about the situation and the abruptly unfolding events. Freezing, she completely tried to understand where she was and who, not believing what was happening, it was all too unexpected. Suddenly, Turney came saying that he was counting on her, calling her the youngest. Leaning towards her, he introduced himself, only calling himself her older brother, which was surprising, and she couldn't believe that this guy suddenly became her brother. Seeing her surprise, Turney asked if she even knew this, to which she only smiled awkwardly, mentally thinking that she didn't want to know, even apologizing in her thoughts. Without saying anything, the girl just drooped as if exhaling from tension, feeling not in the best shape. After the prince names her as his bride, she is captured and brought to Lelia's palace, the place where the crown prince's future wife learns palace etiquette. Realizing that at least they told her that she would really do everything tomorrow, and gave her a rest so that she could sleep at night and have a good night for business. Unfortunately, the girl was unable to sleep properly, which is why she was tired. Turning to Turney, the girl clearly showed her lack of sleep, remembering that she was told that she would have to study science since she became a bride, just as he rolled in here at dawn and sat her down, listening, but not delving into the guy's chatter, she still could not believe in the reality of the whole situation everyone except her was calm. Finally listening to him, the guy said that she already knew everything, but he would better explain it again to move on, introducing himself by name. Continuing, he said that from today she is Etienne Chabil Rabat Oviedo. The secret daughter of the Marquis of Oviedo, which greatly shocked the girl, watched him slightly frightened while he seemed to glow with joy. In her thoughts, she remembered that she had heard about her, that one day she took and appeared the youngest daughter, realizing that she herself was puzzled by such news. But now, it is clear what the story is behind it. The girl understood that, in fact, if Aeson had not escaped, she would not have had to go through all this torment, although she also learned the secret and would have died near that door. Aeson was an escort knight for the crown prince. Perhaps this is the name of the one for the guy, his bride, whom he loves. Continuing the thought, the girl realized that this was a man in a woman's outfit. Her head was boiling from all this, trying to understand why they were talking about this when she came up, because because of this she was now here, and she just wanted a quiet life from all this. Tierney said that he really felt sorry for the girl, that she had contacted the crown prince and could be noticed, to which she quickly agreed, whining a little. Lifting her chin, the guy said that, in any case, she had a lot to learn, adding that if she doesn't want to study, they will simply kill her, and there are two weeks left before the ball. The girl was frightened by the timing, but the guy continued smiling that yes, therefore, she will have to become like Eason before that time, that is, how to ideally play the role of the bride. Remembering the image of Adrian, she understood that this was the only way she would not die, doing everything as needed. Understanding the strict requirements and pressure from the crown prince, she mentally asked herself whether she would even be able to survive in this case. Outwardly, the girl clearly did not hide her fear and anxiety about this, 
replaying Turney's recent words. She quickly replied that she would remember these words, addressing him as Your Excellency Count of Oviedo, to which the guy reassured her that there was no need to be so dry and formal, because they were now brother and sister. Having calmed down a little, she agreed and called him her brother, smiling slightly. Continuing, the guy asked, After all, she worked as a maid. Maybe she knows aristocrats well, to which the girl answered hesitantly, Yes, a little. As if deliberately frightening her, Turney said that if she did it a little, she would die, to which the girl quickly corrected herself, saying that she knew them very well, for sure. By this time, Adrian had already arrived, asking if they had completed their training, looking sternly in their direction. For some reason, the guy clearly said that almost yes, with which the girl strongly disagreed, because they hadn't even started yet. The stern gaze of the crown prince looked clearly at her, pressing and as if condemning. The girl looked perplexed, feeling awkward, trying to understand what she did wrong. Waving his hand back, Adrian told Tierney that since they were almost finished, let him go out. It's not that urgent. The guy was indignant, because the crown prince himself hurried him to come here, and now he's kicking him out. But he was obviously of little interest in this. He simply grabbed his friend by the collar, rudely leading him out of the hall. Adrian turned sharply towards the girl as if looking appraisingly. Looking at him in response, she was perplexed, looking questioningly. The guys turned around and left, leaving her alone in the hall opposite the closed door, puzzled and confused. Watching, the girl was surprised, not understanding what it was, especially the way Adrian looked at her. She learned that two people would be involved in her training, one of whom was now her older brother. But the second became her main maid named Lucy, who always laughed. Having introduced herself to the girl like Madame Lucy, she herself asked if she was now her maid. Closing the fan, Lucy tried to relax the girl so that she would not worry about the upcoming ball, because if you trust her, then she, as a future bride, will shine brighter than before. Coming closer to her, the maid said that first she would need to alter all her clothes, which surprised her and forced her to ask her again if it was all of them. Having only more clearly confirmed her words, the girl was shocked, and the thought flashed through her mind that she was a little strange, receiving only her groan. Walking along the evening corridor, the girl wondered if Lucy herself knew about that secret. Looking at her, she understood that she most likely knew, but just in case she decided to ask. Approaching her, the girl asked if she knew that the bride was a man, to which she quickly replied that, of course, because she herself dressed him in women's clothes and, as if proudly, continued that it seems no one had guessed this before. Entering another room, a huge wardrobe of clothes of different colors and types appeared in front of them, as if shining before their eyes with their beauty. While taking measurements, Lucy addressed the girl as Lady A.T.I., saying that the dress they needed to alter was what she would wear in two weeks for Her Majesty's birthday, because only she would see it at least once. The girl would dream about it constantly because for its beauty. Suddenly, A.T.I. realized that the ball she would be attending would be a celebration of Her Majesty's birthday. Writing down the girl's measurements in a notebook, Lucy said that Mr. Eason loved that dress very much, and now she is sad that he suddenly disappeared, but it is not surprising that the atmosphere between them was so difficult. The girl asked between whom, and the maid told her that she was talking about Essen and the heir to the throne. Introducing, Lucy said that they had a special relationship, which the girl understood little. Then the maid began to talk first, because as she said, everything was immediately clear from their childhood, about their friendly relationship, which is why the girl awkwardly mentally asked herself whether it was really friendly. She continued, she said that His Highness once said that if a person yields to Eason, then he will never enter the hall with him. Having finished, she tried to inspire A.T.I. so that she would not worry. She would quickly get used to it and would not be discovered, although this did not relax the girl much. Hiding the notebook, Lucy said that she had taken her measurements, so it was time to move on to the next one. She enthusiastically decided to find colors that would suit the new lady A.T.I., while the girl herself was wondering when her training would begin. Crown Prince Athenano Hadrian, as the only successor, received much praise and always heard from everyone that he would become emperor. He is talented in all areas and was also recognized by society, since he was the son of the empress, which is why, if you believe the rumors, it may seem that he is truly an ideal crown prince. However, it had one serious flaw that was not widely publicized. 
It was his simply disgusting character which he absolutely did not hide. The girl mentally did not understand why there were no rumors about this. Such a terrible character cannot be hidden simply by wanting it. It looked like a real fraud, especially since the crown prince hated women, which is why he constantly ignored requests for matchmaking from other noble houses. And then suddenly a partner appeared, sent by fate, to whom he became attached and subsequently fell in love, who was Atienne Chebil Rabat Oviedo. The daughter appeared out of nowhere in the Oviedo family, which had always had only one descendant for several generations in a row. The prince only felt something when he saw her and agreed to take her. It was not clear why, but society did not ask any questions regarding this. In any case, continuing her flight of thoughts, the girl realized that that daughter was a man disguised as a woman, and even she could not imagine this. She also wondered why the bride ran away. Was he really unable to withstand his terrible character? As if delighted with her guesses, the girl understood that this made sense. One could guess. Adrian interrupted her thoughts by calling her over, to which she turned to him, responding. He firmly asked what she was thinking about, which made ATI worried, realizing that she was too deep in thought, stuttering and trying to say something. Taking out his sword, he asked that she really wanted to die right here, while she was frightenedly trying to explain that she was just thinking about something else for a while. Looking at her gloomily, he repeated her words about something else, continuing that he believed that she wanted to tell everyone about her parting with this world. Having bowed to him, she screamingly asked him to leave her alive, making excuses that she was wrong, while Tierney, smiling slightly, asked the crown prince not to make fun of the girl. Raising her head to Adrian with a tear, she could not believe that he was just making fun of her. Noticing her gaze, he looked just as calmly and coldly, as if he wasn't joking at all. Mentally, the girl, looking at the guys, was for some reason sure that Adrian would soon pull out his sword in earnest. The crown prince looked at her sharply, asking her to repeat what he had just said while she was lost in her thoughts. Crawling to the other corner of the couch, she thought awkwardly, mentally asking how she could know. Turning to Diano, ATI mentally asked for his help, hoping for some kind of salvation. The guy just turned away, which the girl noticed was a little rude, leaving her alone like that. Looking at Turney, she already mentally asked him for help again, calling him brother, asking him not to leave her, her sister, and send her to another world. Suddenly, the guy began to tap the girl's lips as if drawing her attention to them, which she did. With his lips, he seemed to say, date, a word that ATI did not know. Adrian was already impatiently asking the girl if there would be an answer from her, and she quietly said that a date with her was, of course, more of a question. Frowning, the crown prince said what kind of nonsense this was, looking askance at her. Realizing that this was possibly the wrong answer, ATI fearfully realized that now she was definitely a corpse. Looking at her brother, so to speak, she did not understand his setup, what kind of person she was, thinking in her mind while he seemed to glow with joy. Looking gloomily and menacingly at ATI, Adrian said that, even despite the fact that he had already given her a chance several times, the girl quickly interrupted him, frantically apologizing and asking him to leave her alive. She herself tried to remember when he gave her a chance. Having already turned to the guys, the crown prince, without embarrassment, called the girl stupid, believing that she would be of no use, because it seemed that they would quickly be discovered like that. But Tierney tried to relax, because this is better than no one at all by saying that, but mentally the girl considered him a moron for such ideas. Then Diano said that after all, the girl is quick-witted and not so useless at first glance. The crown prince directly asked the one that he was now really opposing him and his thoughts. The guy calmly replied that no, he would not dare to resist his order, calling him his highness. Adrian corrected that he had just done it, had just resisted, but the guy was sure that he had not, while ATI understood that he only pretended to help, but he himself did not give any sense and angered the air even more. Mentally, the girl felt surrounded by enemies, feeling that they were annoyed because of the inability to kill her, asking God not to die for her. She did not want to. As if deliberately mockingly, Turney asked the guy that he would marry that girl. Roughly and seriously, the crown prince asked if he had really decided to die, for which the guy apologized. ATI, sitting and listening to them, tried to understand who the girl they were talking about now was. Lost in her thoughts, vaguely hearing their voices, she understood that they clearly would not tell her anything. 
Suddenly, Deano turned away from the guy's conversation, looking at the girl, as if slightly puzzled. Seeing his gaze, A.T.I. shuddered, not understanding what he wanted from her or why he was looking. The guy voiced that the princess was looking for this maid, saying that she sent her to the prince on an errand, but she did not return, to which Adrian glared at him and said that he asked him to tell her that she had died. Turney picked up the conversation and explained that few people would believe this, especially since it seems that the princess certainly does not. Having asked him to do something suitable, the guy scratched the back of his head, realizing that he had again been entrusted with something difficult. Deano sharply called his highness and conveyed that if he wants to kill her, then it is better to do it quickly and get rid of the corpse. ATI was shocked by the guy's proposal, mentally screaming and scolding him that it would be better for him to shut his mouth and not say whatever he wanted about someone else's life, about her life. As soon as Adrian got up, he immediately said that this was nonsense, because then Deano would marry that crazy woman. The guy was shocked by this answer. But of course he said no, especially since there is something that can be said and what cannot be said, and what he said was and is terrible. Continuing, he said that he would rather die, to which the crown prince responded negatively, because he does not need to die, which A.T.I. envied, because although she wants to live, they keep threatening her with death. Awkwardly raising her hand up, the girl attracted attention to herself, immediately apologizing for this, and immodestly asked that the prince was supposed to have a bride. Until now, the crown prince has withstood pressure from his elders very well, even without a bride. More precisely, on the contrary, people were surprised at what kind of bride he suddenly brought. The girl thought that it seemed to her that Adrian did not have to find a replacement. The crown prince, looking at her, answered sharply, Yeah, out of awkwardness, she asked why, trembling slightly. Adrian, as if avoiding the question, asked if there was a reason why she should know this, to which the girl answered no with a drooping look, while he advised that she should better concentrate on her duties, as if thereby crushing her. Tierney, trying to support, asked the prince why he was so rude to her, because it might just be interesting, right? He turned to her while she awkwardly nodded her head in agreement. The guy himself began to explain that, in fact, Her Majesty the Empress herself wants the Crown Prince to get married as soon as possible, because before he used his young age to avoid a wedding. Now, the prince has grown up and is already over 20 years old and already needs to get married, but he suffered only a real collapse. But the girl listened attentively, a little surprised by this fact. Continuing, Turney said that the Empress herself wants Adrian to marry a certain lady and that girl is very unusual. Gloomily, the crown prince himself added that instead of making that crazy woman his wife, it would be better to completely destroy the empire. Realizing that the guy seriously hated her, she took the cup from the table while the guys discussed whether Eason had been found. The other replied that everything was in progress. Taking a sip of tea, Tierney said sharply that it was all because of the prince's excessive ardor in bed, causing A.T.I. to spit out the tea a little. Having dropped the mug, from which the liquid was already spilling onto the carpet, rolling, the girl was shocked and perplexed by such words. Shocked, she mentally repeated the words bed and ardor, blushing a little. Soon there was a dead silence where A.T.I. Red sat and looked at the guys while they looked at her reaction in return. She awkwardly apologized, raising her mug and saying that it was just air, they could continue the conversation. Adrian noticed that very often the air began to seem to communicate, which the girl confirmed, surprising herself. The crown prince continued that the guy called the guard ran away and this was intentional, so no one can understand where exactly he went. Deano absurdly suggested that maybe he had just gone home. Leaning deeper on the chair, Adrian said that he had already contacted and found out that he had not come, and they needed to quickly find him, thinking. Tierney said that perhaps since he has a replacement, there is no longer any need to look for him. The crown prince looked sternly at A.T.I., answering that he was really asking him to believe in this. The girl just laughed awkwardly, as if from tension. Having risen, Adrian still agreed that in any case, she would be useful for two weeks, because the celebration for the birth of the Empress should take place without problems and hesitations. But A.T.I. modestly asked what would happen to her if someone revealed that she was a fake. Having risen, he rudely answered her that she would either die or die, so he hoped for her, let her try. His shadow fell majestically on her which made the pressure from his gaze stronger, constricting the girl. Soon, the crown prince simply kicked his brother and sister out of the room, closing the door behind them. Both were slightly perplexed, 
sitting in silence under the door, a little awkward and embarrassed. Turney quickly smiled and offered the girl a friendly conversation with his family. Smiling awkwardly, ATI mentally did not understand. They had only recently known each other, and he was already calling her his sister, even though they were not the same, especially in blood, especially since the girl was more interested in how to get out of here faster. Walking down the hallway behind Tierney, ATI was worried and scared by everything that was happening, not knowing how she would deal with the whole problem. The guy in front was walking quite happy and inspired. It's just unclear why, oh yes, my dear and faithful YouTube viewer, I will walk with the same happy and inspired look after you subscribe to my channel and comment, have a nice day. Hugs. Suddenly stopping, Turney called her and asked if the girl was planning to run away from here. ATI was slightly surprised by this question, thinking that he was like a seer but replied that of course she would not run away. Still, out of interest, she awkwardly asked Turney what would happen if she suddenly tried to escape and was discovered, which made the guy surprised by such a sharp question. Answering calmly, he clearly said that everything was obvious here, that her head would fly off her shoulders which scared the girl a little. Continuing, he said that she herself must know that in the inner palace of the imperial family there is the strictest security, and because of Essen, it was strengthened in other palaces like Lily and Foinsetia. Slightly frightened, ATI swallowed, looking at the guy, answering with some surprise that this is how everything has changed. Adding Turney said that there is no mercy in Adrian, and even the fact that she is alive now is his amazing mercy. ATI looked at him in surprise, not believing that this was mercy especially since this is called mercy. Turning to her, the guy said that he was just saying that, nothing like that. As if jokingly, Turney told the girl that her brother, that is he, is a brother. That's why he remains alive, even if he bullies the crown prince, but this is definitely not about her. Looking at her, he wished her with the hope that she would live long, calling her his sister, which clearly did not make the girl happy. Sitting with her books that day, ATI completely got rid of the desire to run away, because she was sure that, whether intentionally or not, Turney had not lied to her. The girl sat diligently at the table and wrote, because she had to immerse herself in her studies. Literally sweating, she did it for the sake of her survival. ATI is now learning about the system in the palace and the things she must do as part of the nobility. She was able to quickly learn all this only due to the fact that she was from a bankrupt noble family otherwise, the crown prince himself would have killed her long ago, but this did not make the task much easier. Even so, to one degree or another, some of the classes with Lucy seemed incredibly cruel and simply merciless, but she was glad that the more she studied, the greater and higher the probability of staying alive. Showing off the new dress, Madame Lucy groaned in her usual way, but asked how a girl could wear such a dress. ATI felt a loss of strength when the maid laughed like that, it put enormous pressure on her, especially since she wanted to study more. Lucy did not stop, showing and asking how beautiful this or that dress was for a girl, which annoyed her, because she didn't care whether these clothes were beautiful or not. They would not affect her life in any way, why she was only interested in studying. The maid only turned away from the topic because the girl can handle everything. That's how she feels, which ATI herself did not feel, believing that she herself knew nothing. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door which distracted both of them, but Madame Lucy immediately answered yes, allowing them to enter. Diano appeared at the door without going in. He just looked out and asked if everything was okay and how things were going. While the maid, shining with happiness, said that everything, of course, was going perfectly and perfectly, laughing, ATI did not see anything ideal here at all as Madame described. Slightly surprised that everything is like this with the girls, he just sounds great, immediately leaving, slamming the door behind him. Even ATI understood that the knight was completely failing in his duties to check whether their training was going well, simply by taking this Lucy's word for it. Adrian himself thought that it had just been a few days since the girls started studying in order to become an ideal future wife for him, entrusting these lessons without any hope but she surprised him with her good progress in this part. He understood that no matter how confused, stupid, and imperfect she seemed, she was quick-witted and knew how to quickly assess the situation, adapting to it. ATI, whose real name was Viola, knew how to adapt to the mood of others, and perhaps because her life was on the line, she learned quite quickly. Thoughtful, 
Adrian still understood that she was trying only out of a desire to survive, but even it already seemed to him that she was really useful. Turney entered into thoughts by suggesting that the girl was still from the nobility, and she could still have excellent innate qualities. Adrian was surprised by this reaction in words, because the girl is nothing to the guy. But even though he is not a real brother and sister, he takes care of her and calls her A.T.I. But he answered rudely that she clearly cannot have such qualities, especially since he refers to the innate qualities of the crown prince's wife. Answering no, the prince asked what qualities he was talking about, to which Tierney replied with a wink that the qualities of his little sister clearly pleased as he said this. Clasping his hands in his hands, Adrian seemed to be irritated by this behavior, which made him think that maybe he should finish him off now. Only clutching his head did he understand that it was not time yet by killing him, he would have to sort out a whole bunch of things himself. Tierney continued giggling that he was incredibly happy about her appearance, considering her a dear little sister who was very obedient and listened to him well. Diano added that this was all because of his threats, but he hit him with a notebook and changed the topic to the fact that the girl is finally starting to dance today, and whether he will become her partner in the first lesson. The crown prince only rudely asked if he was serious, sternly refusing, which upset the guy, mockingly saying that he, the noble brother, had no other choice but to go himself and help her. Adrian thought that he was sure that at first, Turney was also not happy about the headache from Viola, not understanding why he suddenly liked her so much that he was not against helping her. Lucy said that to begin with, she ordered about 50 dresses again, which surprised the girl, why such a number, asking herself if she could even wear them all out in her entire life. Closing the fan, the maid explained that since this was the girl's first time, she had made such a small and modest order on purpose, warning that next time she would buy 200 pieces, imagining how fun it would be for them to choose one of them. ATI did not share such an interest in the pile of clothes on the contrary. She believed that they were being used for some kind of doll games, which she didn't like much. Without stopping, Madame also said that they still had to choose jewelry and little things for the outfits, which upset the girl more. Laughing again, the girl already hated this sound, mentally calling it damn, that it would soon cause her to develop neurosis. The conversation was interrupted by knocks on the door, where Lucy again answered yes, letting her into the room. A maid approached her, starting to whisper something in Madame's ear. Turning, they began to leave, only Lucy turned to ATI, asking her to sit here for a while. Before she had time to ask what it was, the girl was already alone in the room, where there was dead silence. While she looked around with her eyes, the hall was full of magnificent outfits, which was incredibly surprising. Such a range of tastes and varied attire. Approaching one of them, the girl began to examine it, realizing that before she could not even, it was difficult to buy even the cheapest dress. Having let go of it, she looked around. How many other beautiful ones were dressed up, thinking that if she could steal even one, it would be her life? Remembering the image and especially the look of the crown prince, she realized that her life would end. It was time to stop such a stream of thoughts. Turning towards the door, the girl did not understand why he, by the way, had not come until now. Approaching the door, she heard the whispers of the girls who were discussing that Madame Gabrielle had come to the Empress, to which another asked if now the other considered her insanely intrusive, receiving the answer that it was probably because she wanted to marry His Highness, and ATI was slightly surprised by such rumors. Looking to see who was whispering, the girls continued their discussion until the girl realized that Gabrielle was a lady from the famous family of the Chancellor. Having realized it, she thought with a slight question to herself that she really was the crazy woman the prince was talking about. When asked why His Highness hated Lady Gabrielle so much when she was so beautiful, while the other asked her if she really didn't know about a rumor about which ATI was also puzzled, the maid boldly voiced that the prince liked and loved men which surprised the girl. That's why he hates Lady Gabrielle and other ladies, and to claim that this is true, there is Lady Atienne, while the girl herself smoothly moved away from the door. Approaching, the maid whispered to her friend that there was a rumor that in fact this Mrs. Atienne was just a cover. The question suddenly came to her that she had really been discovered, frightenedly not understanding how this was possible, while after the maids they realized that these rumors were some kind of nonsense that the writer started it directly. 
In the palace, there are often just meaningless rumors. Here, Madame Lucy had already returned with the books, joyfully calling Madame Atienne, notifying her of her presence. She placed the books on the table with a sharp sound that made the girl jerk, sighing slightly. Looking gloomily, Madame warned that ATI would now have to memorize all this, groaning. Poking the book in front of her, she said that she would need to study all these today, which made the girl smile awkwardly. Having opened one of them, the girl mentally understood, reading carefully, that there were no pictures in the book, and there was also a very small font, realizing that even if she read it, she would not be able to learn it a day in her life. Lucy also warned that from 7 o'clock they would start training dances, and the girl realized that she would still die here, but motivating herself, she promised herself to survive. Grabbing the pen, she poked her head into the books, writing for herself, repeating to herself again that she would definitely live. Madame Lucy came to the crown prince, who was also working with papers, but was distracted by the maid. He rudely asked her how that maid was studying, as if without interest. Lucy corrected him a little that his highness should call her his bride, smiling. With dissatisfaction, he corrected himself, sarcastically asking how his fiancé was doing, using quotation marks without taking it seriously. This suited Madame Lucy quite well, which is why, opening her fan, she waved it, smiling and proud, and said that she was doing a great job. He also asked where Adrian brought such a sweet and beautiful lady from, so that the prince asked again, remembering Ati's appearance, that she was sweet and beautiful, isn't it? Lucy continued that she is innocent and listens well to her. Perhaps in appearance she is a little inferior to the knight Eason, but because of this, she is more interested in dressing and decorating her, noting that she is simply charming if you choose the right outfit. Continuing, Lucy praised that from morning to evening, the girl diligently studies everything she gives, and these are the rules of etiquette, poetry, singing, dancing, playing instruments, history, so even a huge number of directions in philosophy, as well as never expressed reluctance. She studies diligently, Lucy said with outright admiration, describing her to the crown prince in all her glory. Adrian called Diano, asking his opinion about the girl and her successes, which the maid said. Not confidently, but still the knight said that apparently the girl really gets along well with the people inside the palace. Then everything is fine. Remembering how she interacted with Diano's servants, she still suggested that perhaps it was worth observing a little more. Thinking, looking away, he thought a little more maybe he's right with Lucy. He also had the thought of trying to leave the girl alone, since she was coping so well. But Adrian was more worried about whether he would be able to survive the ball, which would take place very soon, without incident. After all, if something goes wrong, he will have to marry that crazy woman who was of little interest in this, and did not want to, imagining this moment. Clutching his head, he exhaled, asking if there was news about Eason or if there was none yet. Diano replied that there was no news, which clearly irritated the crown prince because it was unclear where he was then. Remembering, Adrian stood in front of him while he, clenching his fists, shouted and asked how long he should do this, and he answered him until he becomes emperor and he knows it. He sharply angrily asked if he killed the crown prince, he could stop doing it, to which he received a question whether this was really a rebellion on his part. Screaming, he honestly answered that he did not become his knight for the sake of this, as if perceiving it as a mockery. Adrian, indignantly but coldly, said that he knew even though he looked like his knight, but this did little to console the guy, who asked louder whether the prince had seen the knight in a dress. With sarcasm, the crown prince replied that he was the first and let him accept and consider it as an honor, to which the guy was more angry, believing, voicing, that he was saying that because he wanted to die right away from his sword. Adrian disappointed him because in this way he would die before he killed him, why he clenched his teeth and said to the devil, after shouting that he had had enough. Having thrown off his veil, he turned around and left the guys with some hatred. The prince did not think that Asen would run away because of this, voicing that it was necessary then to deal with him properly. It was all because of the empress and the very girl whom Adrian now called crazy. Society thought that the prince did not like girls, which was not true, because he did not like all people completely. Perhaps because of those with whom he grew up since childhood, the guy did not want to talk to anyone at all. The rest attributed everything to his shyness, but only people close to him knew the truth. The empress was always unhappy with her son who never showed interest in the lady. All his hatred arose from one noble lady, that same crazy girl, 
but the Empress did not understand him at all, and instead suddenly gave an order. She told him that if Adrian did not bring his bride within a week, then he would have to marry her whether he wanted it or not. The Empress's order surprised him greatly, especially since the Crown Prince had many reasons why he avoided that very girl. The main reason was in childhood, when that seven-year-old girl hit his horse because the guy did not play with her but was engaged in horse riding. Unfortunately, after a while she died of hunger, and she was found by such a crown prince also at a younger age. The girl herself completely forgot about the horse, and despite all the guy's questions, she answered coldly. As if with surprise, the prince felt sarcasm that she had died. The girl's coldness did not allow her to perceive pity. After that, Adrian began to hate all people, especially imbued with anger towards that girl. Due to his reluctance to marry her, Adrian immediately began to hold balls throughout the week. But as expected, this was impossible. Why then the prince passed, no longer knowing what to do, made a desperate decision by dressing the knight Aeson in a woman's dress, even though he did not agree to such a thing. The crown prince asked to convey that they must catch Aeson, to which Diana replied, Yes, calling your highness. Then someone came to them, telling his highness that Albert had come from Grace Palace, forcing everyone to pay attention to him. With a slight start, Adrian realized that it was from the Empress's palace, tensed slightly. Having told the servant through the door, he asked him to tell him that he was not there, to which he said that he knew that he was inside. Moreover, Her Majesty the Empress gave an order, because of which the Crown Prince only tensed up, listening more attentively while he conveyed that she said that Lady Gabrielle had arrived and he was obliged to attend the tea party with her. The palace was brightly illuminated by sunlight. There was not a shadow anywhere. A kind of lightness and freshness was felt. Watching through the window, ATI was distracted by Turney, who called her, continuing to call her his little sister, which is why she turned around. Smiling absurdly, not knowing what to say, the guy simply asked how school was going and if it was a lot. Slightly upset by the topic of studying, the girl, with a slight droop, replied that it would be necessary, to which Tierney tried to support her, that she would have to study diligently if she did not want to die as it would have to. Looking at him, I didn't understand a little, mentally wondering how it was even possible to die as I had to. Noticing that there was no one with him, the guy explained that His Majesty, unfortunately, didn't have much. He couldn't come, but he would be there instead trying to cheer up the girl's mood, although she was not upset by the absence, on the contrary, saying that she is even glad, mentally understanding that it would be better if the two of them were not in her life. Frowning slightly, Tierney immediately noticed her emotion, slightly perplexedly asked what it was and why she was avoiding him. Would she really not come over? To which she shook her head negatively. Then the guy asked if he was really dirty, to which A.T.I. nodded her head yes, and he jokingly began to whine, saying that he was the only younger sister and so bad, which the girl mentally told herself not to pay attention to, she would not pay him any attention. Then Madame Lucy came, beaming with joy, clapping her hands and telling them to begin smiling from ear to ear. Holding hands, Turney began to lead Etienne forward to dance, as is customary. Lightly barking at her, the guy said that she had recently said that he was dirty, but she held hands with him, which made the girl feel awkward. Whirling in a dance to the music, to the surprise of everyone, the dance went smoothly and beautifully, as if not the first time. Having become a little nervous, the girl was slightly confused, but quickly returned to movement, awkwardly looking away. Unexpectedly, Tierney complimented her that she was dancing well, that there was even hope for survival, some small chance, but even he made her smile. Madame Lucy had already hurried towards them, praising ATI herself for her obedience to the guy, groaning as usual, waving her fan. The maid also asked if maybe the girl had studied dancing somewhere, to which she awkwardly replied that she knew how to dance quite a bit before her family went bankrupt. Lucy sighed regretfully, covering her face with her fan, which made ATI slightly nervous, because she somehow didn't care. Even, rather, this situation looked more like a disaster. Taking the girl's hands in his, Turney said that everything would be all right, calling her sister, promising that their family would not go bankrupt under any circumstances, and she would not be alone. But in her mind, A.T.I. wished it was better to be alone. Unexpectedly, Madame Lucy said that the dance lesson could be completed, which the girl was indignant about. Not understanding such a rush, she asked again. 
attorney immediately turned around, saying that he also needed to go report, so both began to leave while the maid accompanied them with groans, leaving Atienne in bewilderment. She was indignant, mentally not understanding how she could end it by dancing only once, already considering that it was just a waste of time to teach her something, but soon she found herself alone in the silence of an empty room. Instantly, the door opened back up, where Turney asked what she was doing, because she should also go with them, calling her her sister. Grabbing her hand, she only had time to figure out what to ask when she was already pulled into the corridor. While walking, the guy asked why he was dirty if he washed his hands clean on purpose, to which ATI mentally asked him to leave behind without answering anything. During the day, the sun was already high, leaving a magnificent view of the flower beds near the palace, beautifully illuminating them, accompanied by the singing of birds. The crown prince immediately frowned and realized that he had simply been tricked into the street. Only Lady Gabrielle was sitting at the table, and she jumped up and immediately invited His Highness, saying that she really, really missed him. Without reacting, he simply turned around and walked back, mentally realizing that even though he forced himself to come here because of the order of the Empress, he did not need to be here without her presence. She then asked where he was going. Was he really so embarrassed when he saw her that he was now hiding, turning away and leaving, to which the prince stopped? Turning around gloomily, Adrian said nothing to this, just looking askance at her. Smiling, looking at him, she continued that there was no need for this, because she felt the same as he did, and there was no point in hiding their feelings from each other anymore. Obviously not sharing this happiness, the prince only looked at her sharply, thinking that the empress had been trying too often lately to attach her to him, deciding that for the next few months, even if his mother called him, he would not agree, this was too much. Smiling slyly, she warned that if he left, the Empress would be upset by the way, she asked him to tell him something. Now Adrian was paying attention because the Empress was asking him to convey something, and even then not believing what exactly to convey. She said that if he was not here when Her Majesty arrived, she would receive an incredible gift. Looking askance, the Prince understood where this was going, which he clearly didn't like, feeling manipulated. Lady Gabrielle was pleased with herself and with the plan, which clearly worked for the guy. I had to sit down with the girl for tea, but nothing was said, and the crown prince did not even look in her direction. Deciding to break the silence, Lady Gabrielle began to say that they had not seen each other for a long time. Probably he could not sleep peacefully because of how much he missed her, herself saying that this was exactly what happened to her. Irritably, he only answered yes, of course, taking the mug, wanting to drink and not continue the conversation. Continuing, the girl began to say that she already knew everything. He didn't have to talk, because he was clearly bored, to which she only received a cold no. Gabrielle spoke as if about her own things, deliberately irritating the prince, saying that she had once heard that a strong denial meant the opposite, madly thanks to his deep longing for her, as if he was flattering her. The approaching footsteps distracted both of them, forcing them to turn and recognize the intruders. ATI stood in front of them, accompanied by the guys, Turney and Diano, who were calm, while the girl looked slightly scared. The prince coldly illuminated everyone with his gaze, clearly not understanding what they were doing here. Lady Gabrielle was surprised by the guests, especially by the arrival of a girl whom she did not know. Diano stood calmly and firmly, reflecting this in his gaze, like an accompanying knight. Turney, as always, smiled absurdly, looking at everyone as if nothing was wrong even though he knew Gabriel very well. Only Atienne was worried and worried, smiling absurdly, looking at the prince and the new lady. Shy the girl did not understand, mentally trying to understand what kind of situation this was now, feeling awkward, but in order to understand how this happened, she needed to find out what she had. Having entered sharply, Turney immediately began shouting to Adrian to tell him what ATI had just done to him, which ATI did not like much. But the guy soon looked around, seeing that the crown prince was not there. Only Diana was standing there to whom he asked where he had gone. Nervously, he replied that she had arrived, which puzzled him, raising the question of who. As soon as that girl spoke, Turney immediately understood who his friend was talking about, clearly imagining her image. Even Diana spoke nervously but with hatred about her, which made him feel a certain darkness. Turney shouted in surprise, that how could she have already arrived, to which the knight explained to him that Her Majesty told Adrian that she had invited this girl to a tea party, 
Despite the anger, the guy soon turned to ATI, smiling slyly, which she did not understand, looking in surprise and a little scared. Unexpectedly, he told her that the time had come for her attack, which the girl did not understand, honestly asking what. Having called Madame Lucy, she was literally outside the door, immediately asking the gentleman that he had really finished reporting after leaving the office. Turney shouted, either from delight or from excitement, but told the maid that now there was another problem, because they say that that girl had arrived, and this was finally their Ati's chance to speak. They both clearly shared a common hatred for this girl, which is why Lucy said that Madame Gabrielle had arrived. Of course, Lady Etienne should also go to this tea party, while the girl herself did not understand who Gabrielle was. Having heard, the maid thought that she really didn't know, explaining that this was the famous daughter of the Chancellor, to which the girl awkwardly said that no. She knew her, of course, mentally realizing that that girl was this lady named Gabrielle. But Madame Lucy still began to say that Lady Gabrielle is the daughter of the Nebel family, that she is friends with the Valario family, who are relatives of the Empress on her mother's side. Thanks to this, all of Her Majesty's love goes to one person. Covering her face with a fan, she admitted that as a person she was so-so, but mentally, A.T.I. understood that Madame Lucy did not really like Gabrielle. The girl knew very well that the family had a lot of money, the business of the Nebel family was known even to common people, and besides, when her family went bankrupt, all at least a little valuable property went to her family, realizing that it meant Gabrielle was their daughter. Despite her bad reputation, as the maid continued to say, Gabrielle was popular in noble society, which slightly surprised A.T.I. Having slightly pushed the girl, Turney wanted to support her, reassuring her that everything was in order, especially since their family was much better. Taking the girl by the hand, Lucy said with a groan that it was time for them to get ready, leaving the girl perplexed, which is why she asked what they needed to get ready for. The maid said that A.T.I., of course, should just go to His Highness the Crown Prince, which gave no answers, only continuing to ask why. Lucy assured her that she was his bride, groaning, because she simply had to take the prince away from Lady Gabriel, which Tierney supported, only A.T.I. did not share this point of view, mentally asking why she should, she doesn't need a prince, this lady can if she didn't mind taking him away. The maid convinced her, all the more reasoning that this would be a rehearsal before the ball. A dissatisfied girl in a new bright robe walked next to the guys along the corridor, not having any joy in going to the prince. A.T.I. deliberately walked more slowly, more closely aligned with the guys. Tierney tried to encourage her to be decisive, that everything would be okay because they were with her. But this did not help much, only mentally thinking with sarcasm that this really helped perk up her spirit. Dano asked for a minute and soon approached and handed her a transparent veil. Turning around, A.T.I. was slightly surprised, realizing what he was giving her, a little embarrassed. Dropping his gaze, as if being modest, he asked that she wear it, mentioning that the Essen always wore a veil. With a slight movement, the girl threw it over her hair, and only beautifully decorated it with the veil. Now they walked more decisively, only without saying a word, heading into the garden to the place of tea drinking. Going out into the street, the girl soon heard Lady Gabrielle's voice, turning in her direction. She was actively telling something, as if not noticing that the prince was not even paying any attention to her, sitting in the darkness from the lady, with his hand on the sword, which he had clearly been wanting to get for a long time. Turney also noticed this, suggesting that they hurry there quickly, otherwise he would get him, which would not be a plus for anyone. And so their gazes met, which made A.T.I. awkward, but stopping at Gabrielle, mentally realizing to himself that this was that girl. Gabrielle was not at all happy about the meeting, dissatisfiedly examining the girl with a condemned look. Feeling uncomfortable, A.T.I. realized that she had disturbed their time together, so it seemed that the lady was sizing her up. But who knows? They stood awkwardly, but the girl continued her thoughts that she knew that she and the two men next to her saved her life. Soon A.T.I. was seated next to her in the group, with a mug of tea placed in front of her, which embarrassed her. The guys quickly ran away. Diano said that he needed to go to the sword which sounded like nonsense. He was clearly sad to be alone. Turney got away with sudden urgent matters, adding that he probably didn't turn off the light in the room. Why the girl was angry with them, considering them traitors. 
ATI felt very uncomfortable alone in such a company, where Lady Gabriel was diligently trying to get the attention of Prince Adrian, who clearly did not care. Gabrielle was familiar with Lady Atien, only in the form of Eason, which is why she immediately said that she had not seen her for a long time, where Adrian got into the conversation, saying that his bride has been very busy lately. With a grin, the lady noted that even if that was the case, she was really that busy, which ATI did not mentally agree with. Changing the subject, Gabrielle remembered that Her Majesty the Empress had formally invited her to dinner, asking, of course, if he, His Highness, would join him, but the Crown Prince coldly replied no. Taking the mug, the girl tried to hide her displeasure that since he was so busy, nothing could be done, but she would wait for him next time to enjoy dinner, while ATI noticed that he did not mention that he was busy. After drinking a little, the lady put the mug down with a loud thud with obvious dissatisfaction. Poking at the dishes, she imperiously told the maid that the tea had already cooled down, and she demanded another to which she bowed and obeyed, leaving. Gabrielle herself tried to further attract the prince's attention, mentioning that this tea is drunk only in the Nebel family. She specially prepared it for his highness, giggling, but the guy was indifferent to this, while ATI looked into the mug in slight surprise. She poured herself some tea from the kettle and poured it warm into the mug, taking a sip. The lady for some reason immediately tensed up, slightly moving the mug away from her as if looking in horror at its contents. Having lowered the cup with a knock on the saucer, she sharply cried out, asking who prepared this tea, ordering her to leave immediately, clearly very irritated. From such a cry, ATI also shuddered, looking at her, mentally not understanding what was wrong with her, feeling a little awkward. Looking into the mug, there was just tea, which is why the girl thought that it looked like there were no problems, and the aroma was pleasant. But why Lady Gabrielle was so drunk really worried her. A maid carefully approached her, very nervous. But when Gabrielle shouted, Did she make this tea? To which she quietly answered, Yes, wanting to apologize. But insults were already flying at her that she had taken the wrong tea leaves that she was talking about. Having asked loudly that the servants really couldn't pull themselves together, a splash was heard, causing ATI to jump up in horror, mentally asking what was going on here. The maid's hands trembled from the boiling water that Lady Gabrielle poured over her for her mistake with the tea. ATI looked at the lady in surprise, asking what it was, while the crown prince turned only out of the corner of his eye silently. Gabrielle, in a rage, did not notice anything, looking hatefully at the maid as if wishing her death for this. The servant fell to her knees in front of her and began to apologize in a trembling voice, asking for forgiveness from the mistress. She rudely warned her to do everything appropriately if she did not want her family to be kicked out of here, which is why the servant tremblingly continued to apologize, only assenting so that she would not get more. Grabbing the mug, Gabrielle was clearly furious, swinging at the servant, who was apologizing to her, saying that it was because of someone like that, and she was now, not really holding back her anger. A sharp grip on her hand forced her to turn around, find out who dared to stop her and stop her from violence. ATI stood behind her, holding her hand, demanding the girl to stop her act. Gabrielle calmed down slightly, more surprised, of course, by what the girl was doing. Yanking her hand, freeing herself from the grip, she asked again what she said, looking judgmentally as if she was not interested. ATI explained that she thought that this was a rude solution to matters, because although the maid made a mistake, she could have behaved generously, which outraged Gabrielle asking again that she really wanted to say that she was not generous, making excuses that this is her personal maid. Lowering her eyes, the girl examined the servant, who, on her knees, was trembling both from pain and from fear. Squeezing her red hands, Gabrielle said that she had the right to decide what punishment she would suffer. Didn't she? Asking ATI. Atienne said decisively that that girl was not just a maid, but first of all a person. This statement surprised the lady, looking at her in shock as if she couldn't believe her ears that she dared to say. The prince uncomfortably looked away from the girls, realizing that Gabriel would now seem to explode at such statements, but remained silent. With her eyes wide, the girl asked the bride what she had just said, as if she had overheard. ATI calmly repeated her words to her, absolutely seriously and sternly. Continuing, she said that of course it's normal to scold the maids, but turning a blind eye to little things is an indicator of the nobility of a true housewife. With a mockery, Gabrielle asked if Lady Atienne really wanted this maid to serve her, 
Not understanding why she was so protective of the servants, the girl told Gabrielle that if she had dealt with the servants not in front of her eyes, then she would not have taken part in the dispute. But it seems that the lady forgot that His Highness the Crown Prince was also here. Looking straight into her eyes, ATI asked if she really didn't think she was being rude in his presence. The prince, while drinking tea and listening to this conversation, noticed the wit in Adi's words, but did not bother, only thinking to himself. He didn't know that the girl spoke so well. He even asked himself if she always did this, and for the first time he learned that she could also get angry. From childhood, Gabrielle was different from others she often slapped the maids in the face. Sometimes she deliberately spoiled their clothes, simply forcing them to wear rags. Adrian certainly didn't like that Gabriel humiliated others, however, she didn't touch him, which was higher. Although the crown prince was used to this kind of thing, his only concern was why the girl did such a thing in front of him. Having placed the mug on the saucer, he briefly said that he was done for today. It seems that the result is already there, but Gabriel tried to stop him, wanting to prolong the minute of tea drinking. Having risen, the prince only looked askance. This was clearly the final decision, which he would not refuse. Approaching Gabrielle, Adrian said that it seems that she is so tired today, so she better return home, which the girl asked again, as if not understanding what he was talking about. The prince only said that he would tell his mother when a servant already approached her, saying that he would take her to the exit from the palace. Adrian and ATI stood still and followed her with their eyes while she left, calling for his highness. The girl exhaled in a relaxed manner and finally found peace, as if she had calmed down. Looking at Adrian out of the corner of her eye, she expected a warm reaction, but he stood coldly and seriously, as if even condemningly. Nervous, she turned to him as if wanting to ask what was wrong, but all that came out was an absurd moo. Looking at his severity, she instantly apologized for forgetting her place, fearing death. Unexpectedly, Adrian said that everything was fine, which surprised ATI, causing him to look up at him, even slightly rejoicing. The crown prince, looking at her, smiled tenderly, which could not but please the girl, especially since the guy told her to continue in the same spirit, which was a little puzzling. Approaching her face, Adrian repeated for her to continue, especially asking her not to follow anyone's mood except his, which slightly embarrassed the girl. A servant knocked on the door, telling his highness that the empress was calling him. Busy with the letter, he asked me to tell him that he had gone hunting so that no one would bother him. From behind the door, the voice of a servant was heard further, saying that the empress conveyed that she already knows that you have not gone hunting, are not involved in politics and are not practicing fencing, which slightly upset the prince because he always used these excuses, and now the empress does not believe them. To excuse himself from this meeting, he glanced at Diano out of the corner of his eye, hoping for his help without words, and he quickly realized. The knight began to answer the newcomer that this was impossible. Very soon his highness intended to go and train with him in the art of the sword. They were just discussing this topic and would soon go to the parade ground. At the end he asked them to convey their sincere regret to the empress, but they must fulfill their duties, to which the servant exhaling said that he would convey it to her. Adrian did not hide, calling his friend well done, that he was already glowing with happiness that he had helped the crown prince. Of course he hoped for the truth of the words, asking that his highness would train with him, but the sharp answer no shocked Diano, greatly upsetting and sad, continuing that he should, because the empress would definitely be reported about this. Dejected from the correct answer to his words, he began to ask for a fight, because they had not fought for a whole week, having not done so yesterday. The crown prince perceived his words as whining, irritated by his requests, realizing that it was impossible to win in training. Handing him the papers, he voiced his condition that he needed to finish all this in half an hour, and then he would practice with him. Beaming with happiness, Diano agreed, taking it, and thanking him for at least such conditions to practice. The crown prince specifically gave this task, mentally calling him an idiot because he wouldn't be able to do it. Without guessing, the loud clanking of swords from their training could already be heard in the parade ground. Exhaling, Diana was incredibly happy, but also focused on the battle, defending himself perfectly against the prince, attacking him. Adrian was also concentrated, deftly dodging the knight's swing, slightly tensed. Turney came to them on the battlefield with A.T.I., whom he brought immediately after the end of the lesson, observing the training. 
the girl felt a high probability of dying, watching how the prince wielded a sword well, which frightened her, because he could cut off her head at once. Tensely, Adrian clearly intended to end the fight, swinging sharply, moving Diano's weapon away, aiming for his body. In the blink of an eye, the sword blade was already on the shoulder of the knight, who was clearly upset about this. Standing in the center of the arena, the guy's fight was decided by the victory of the crown prince, as if resting with such a stop. Then Tierney said that it was a pity because Diano could have won, why both turned to him, clearly not expecting to see them. The guy continued that he missed the chance to make fun of the prince all his life, but ATI only awkwardly asked if Diano wasn't Highness's assistant, awkwardly scratching the back of his head. The knight admitted that after all, his Highness could not lose. Adrian replied that this is because the guy always fights laughing, to which he admitted that he was in such a good mood because he couldn't believe that he could feel the prince so close, and this was very exciting. Adrian approached the girl and asked her what she was doing here, which is why she remained silent, awkwardly looking at him. Silently, Tierney stood up for his sister, saying that she was smarter than she seemed, which is why the lessons ended very quickly. Looking at ATI, Adrian chuckled, smiling at her, as if he himself was proud of her, or was glad that she was not useless. Coming close to her, he said that he could check later, but now he remembered that tea party. ATI showed herself angry there for the first time. Why now the prince asked her to try to be angry, which slightly puzzled her. Having modestly said no, she turned away, mentally trying to understand what this even meant. Continuing, Adrian asked if anything brings discomfort to the girl to which she mentally answered everything. Everything brings discomfort, and especially himself. Not daring to answer like that, she just smiled absurdly and said no, still not looking at him. Bowing slightly, the crown prince said that he was glad, because he did not need a dissatisfied person, but ATI mentally began to count in surprise, no longer knowing how many times her life was at stake. The guys behind were discussing how hard it had been for them all day, believing that it was because of the crown prince, because he was such a difficult person. Turney noticed that some people spend whole days following orders, and some are so lucky that he trains with a sword, to which Diano said, of course, that he loved to death how persistently his highness attacked him. But today, he was less interested. While they continued to discuss, Adrian looked at them angrily, holding his sword at the ready, as if he was ready to use it at any moment, which ATI noticed, trying to nervously warn them, mentally asking them to stop, especially noting that Terni was a crazy person. Noticing the anger that the guys seemed to be seeking, they simply ran away laughing, leaving them alone. ATI looking after them was very surprised by this behavior while Adrian was angry, but in the silence no one said anything about it. Then suddenly the prince turned to the girl, silently but without hatred, looking at her. Feeling his gaze, ATI herself raised her eyes, looking at him, feeling some emotion. Unexpectedly, Adrian asked her if she had already eaten, even though it was early, why the girl expectedly answered no. Turning around, he calmly called for her to go, which is why she stammered and asked where, slightly worried. The prince said sharply that he didn't like slow-witted people either, so why did the girl just follow him to avoid problems? They came to the dining room, where the table was already filled with a variety of dishes that attracted the eye and appetite. Sitting silently, they just clanked the dishes, eating modestly. ATI slowly chewed awkwardly, looking somewhere away from both the food and the prince. He noticed this behavior, literally staring at her, not having breakfast, waiting to distract her. Slightly worried, when ATI chewed, he raised his head and asked if it tasted bad, which slightly puzzled the girl, awkwardly answering no. Then Adrian asked why she was eating slowly, why the girl, awkwardly thinking, said that she was simply trying such delicious food for the first time. In silent response, the crown prince looked at her as if with some kind of anger, but there was no more emotion. He quietly whispered something to the servant who approached, which could not be heard from Ati's side, to which the guy bowed to him, answering something. She watched, puzzled as the servant began to place plates of dishes closer to her, not understanding why or why. Almost all the dishes from the table were now standing next to the girl, which she awkwardly looked at while Adrian told her to eat. Slightly tilting her head forward, she wondered if this was really some kind of concern from the crown prince, but clinking the dishes, she said bon appétit. Embarrassed but smiling, Atienne ate, enjoying the food, which she absolutely loved. 
Leaning on his fist, Adrian watched her with some happiness. After the meal, the girl carefully wiped her lips with a napkin, clearly satisfied with the food. Then a servant came in, calling his highness, Why both stood up while Adrian asked what happened. Approaching the crown prince, he quietly whispered something in his ear, which A.T.I. could not hear, while the prince himself tensed a little. Answering him that he understood everything and would come back later, the servant bowed, saying that he would hand her over to Her Majesty. Turning to A.T.I., Adrian said that he would guide her, which the girl herself did not expect. Rising from the chair that creaked at that moment, she honestly admitted to herself in her mind that she herself thought that he would simply tell her to go on her own. When they approached the door to exhale, the girl awkwardly apologized, calling his highness. She wanted to ask, but was in no hurry. Turning to him, she modestly asked if he didn't need to go, to which he looked at her, answering correctly, not understanding what she was driving at. ATI continued that then, why? But before she could ask the question, the creaking of the door distracted her as they were leaving. Adrian, as if knowing what she meant, answered, walking, that he was afraid that she would run away. Why would she cheat? Glowing with happiness, Madame Lucy ran to the girl, calling Madame Atienne why she asked what was wrong. Inspired, Lucy asked what the girl thought was on the schedule today, which puzzled her a little. She asked again what the schedule was, and as always, studying, a little not understanding what made Lucy happy about it. Gesturing, she said no, which even pleased A.T.I., who asked with interest what then, hoping for something really pleasant. Having created intrigue, the maid covered herself with a fan and announced that this was a trip to Grace's palace, groaning as usual. Dropping the pen with which the girl was writing, she gloomily asked what, not believing it, and seeing absolutely nothing happy, tensed up. Mentally realizing that this was the Empress's palace, she felt as if today was the day of her death. Afraid. Today, A.T.I. did not get enough sleep. Realizing that if only she had known in advance, she would have slept a little more. Although, no, she will sleep forever. Then there is no point in sleeping late. Mentally realizing that you will not breathe before you die, laughing awkwardly. Awkwardly, the girl asked if she had to go, to which Lucy turned around and said that why talk about such obvious things if Her Majesty the Empress was waiting for her? Having arrived in the hall, they began to gather while A.T.I. looked at such a bright room, as if decorated with gold. While Lucy was decorating the girl with bows, she awkwardly asked her if His Highness the Crown Prince would also go with her, mentally admitting that although he was useless, it was better than meeting the Empress alone. The maid, having adjusted Aidy's outfit, honestly answered that no, because Her Majesty the Empress secretly invited only Madame Atienne. Glowing with happiness, Lucy asked that this is a great honor, isn't it? Groaning while the girl mentally said that she did not need such an honor. The maid said that they had finally finished, praising herself that these were her abilities, but also saying that now Mrs. Atienne was incredibly beautiful, only the girl was not very happy while she heard that she was the best. Turning to leave the room, she said that she would return soon without warning where. With her head bowed before she had time to leave, she had already collided with someone, slightly tensed and surprised. Raising her gaze, she twitched slightly, drawing out a slightly surprised expression when she saw Adrian in front of her. Puzzled, she asked herself what. This was the crown prince, as he asked where she was going, not knowing about the visit to the empress. Awkwardly saying that, simply, she slowed down a little in her words, remembering that the empress had summoned her secretly. But could she tell the prince about it? Leaning towards her, he said that he had said that he hates it when they create problems twice, asking again where she was going, where the girl was already wondering what was wrong with him today. Then Madame Lucy came out to them, greeted the prince, and said that the lady was going to meet Her Majesty the Empress because she had called Madame Atienne to her. The girl turned at her in surprise, mentally asking how it was possible to tell this. Glancing at A.T.I., Adrian asked if it was really for his mother, which is why she answered yes, slightly tense and worried. Immediately, the crown prince said that if she said something stupid, he would not leave her alone. Why did the girl look away and mentally say yes? She, of course, thinks that he will do so. She does not doubt him. Stroking his chin, the prince was not sure about the girl, which is why he directly said that he was still worried. Looking at her, he ordered that when she came to her, she should answer any question only yes. Having definitely answered yes, the girl clearly nervously wanted to leave, feeling awkward. Walking around him, she said that she then went, 
mentally understanding that she needed to run away quickly, although Adrian was watching where she was going. The prince noticed that she was walking in the wrong direction, which is what he told her about, why she turned around and looked at him. Turning around in the other direction, she said that everything was the same, but the crown prince said again that this was not the same, which is why she froze. Exhaling as if there was no point in talking or explaining, he told her to follow him. While walking, A.T.I. looked at the corridors of the palace, which were snow-white and majestic, amazed at the beauty. The girl wondered, these patterns on the doors, are they really completely gold? Because then, if you tear one off, you can live for several years without knowing hunger. Moving forward to the door where the Empress was sitting, the Crown Prince suddenly pushed the girl aside, asking her not to block the road. A.T.I. was even slightly happy that the guy was going forward, but still asked if he was going to enter, to which he said that otherwise, why would he come here? Looking at him, she said apologetically, but Her Majesty the Empress only called her. The guy just looks at the girl, leaving her without an answer, just looking askance. Abruptly, the Crown Prince literally burst into the hall, not having time to stop him, only shouting to him to stop already too late. Quietly repeating the wait, they were already in the hall, where Her Majesty was sitting in front of them, watching slightly in surprise. After the surprise, the Empress smiled, saying a welcome for Lady Etienne. The slightly surprised girl looked awkwardly, wondering what to do, as if frozen. Soon rustling her dress and bending slightly, she also greeted Her Majesty, wanting the blessing of the Archangel to come with her. Raising her head slightly, the Empress also said that she wished her the same, inviting them to sit down and be more comfortable. Sitting strictly and firmly, Adrian watched his mother without emotion, while A.T.I. smiled awkwardly and literally got goosebumps. Raising a mug of tea, the Empress admitted that she did not remember inviting the Crown Prince, smiling. He silently looked away, not reacting to her words, only listening carefully. Shaking her head, Her Majesty reacted sharply to this behavior, saying that even though he was her son, she couldn't even raise her head because of how ashamed she was of him. Switching the topic, she already turned to A.T.I., saying that they had not seen each other for a long time, hadn't they? Which is why the girl was already looking at her. Having answered yes, wanting to add a word, she remembered the instructions from Adrian to be sure to say only yes, which is why she awkwardly repeated yes again. The crown prince rudely asked why she called her, to which the empress, taking a sip of a drink from a mug, answered him more rudely that she had nothing to do with him. Having looked at her sternly, Adrian directly said that this was his bride, as if emphasizing that he was also important here then. Her Majesty clearly did not expect to hear this, looking slightly surprised and gasping. Already happy, she asked the servant next to her if she had heard what he had just said, which is why even the servant clapping repeated that, yes, she heard that the crown prince said that this was his bride. Continuing to talk about her mood, the empress said that she was already in awe, not thinking at all that she would ever hear something like that from him, giggling joyfully. Here, Adrian stood up and firmly stated that if Her Majesty had nothing to say, he would immediately leave with A.T.I. Having said well, the Empress had already turned to Lady Adienne, saying that they would get straight to the point. Looking down, she said that a few days ago, during Lady Gabrielle's visit, while she was away for a short time due to other matters, something happened then. She added that she would like to know what happened then, why A.T.I. became slightly busy and stammered, looking at the prince out of the corner of her eye. He sat motionless, which is why the girl no longer understood what to do. Having already looked at the Empress, she became busy again and did not know what to say without violating the request. As if to the rescue, the prince stood up, explaining that A.T.I. only stopped Gabrielle when she was beating her maid, to which the Empress gasped in surprise, now understanding what had happened. Then Her Majesty realized that it was nothing serious, because Gabriel kept telling her that Lady A.T.I. did not care about her, so she was interested in what happened. Um, continuing to speak, the Empress said that even if Gabrielle behaved rudely, she hoped that A.T.I. would not be offended by her. Because if you find out this child is very kind, with which she mentally disagreed, in what place could this lady be kind? Saying that maybe Her Majesty simply cared for Gabrielle as her daughter from her very childhood, which is why she took a liking to her, realizing that they would probably often confront her about why she needed to remain on good terms with her. Like now, A.T.I. simply said yes. Adrian and Gabrielle grew up together since childhood, so they will continue to see each other often, 
to which the girl glanced at Adrian out of the corner of her eye, remembering his words, again answering yes. Suddenly, Her Majesty began to simply ask strange questions, like now, saying that embroidery was popular and asking the girl if she had tried it, to which A.T.I. just looked awkwardly, asking herself mentally embroidery, and so suddenly ask. Looking at Adrian again out of the corner of her eye, she seemed to be trying to figure out what to say. So much time had passed. Is it still necessary to answer yes? Not daring to experiment, she hesitated and quickly answered yes, remembering that she had once been doing embroidery a long time ago, when she no longer remembered, while the prince looked at her even positively. Smiling, the empress continued that she would like to someday look at the work of Lady Atien, can she expect this from her, and that the girl had to say yes, realizing that she was finished. Clapping her hands, Her Majesty continued, asking if she didn't mind what she thought about giving one embroidery to Adrian, to which A.T.I. awkwardly answered yes, even more puzzled. Even so, the girl's answer made her happy, already turning to the prince. Doesn't her son want to get the job of a bride? The crown prince, looking away as if thinking out loud, said embroidery, thinking and saying yes, although clearly hesitantly. A.T.I. was surprised by the answer. Yes, why did she mentally convey to him that he didn't want it? He didn't need it, and neither did she, especially. While the maid was pouring a new mug of tea, the empress noticed that today the weather was beautiful. It even seemed that the sun was too bright, which the worker agreed with her. While the tea was filling the mug, Her Majesty asked everything, first noticing that the girl was wearing a veil and she didn't need to worry about tanning, asking if she was hot. She kept hearing the answer yes. Unexpectedly, as if substituting, she asked if Adrian was a bad LM, to which, answering yes, ATI immediately realized the question, quickly correcting herself to no, which is why she was more worried, hesitating. Without having time to say anything, the crown prince immediately looked askance at her, as if reminding her why the girl did not mentally understand what he wanted, because she was going to answer, no, it would be stupid to say yes. The Empress clung to the word, saying that she did not expect such an answer at all, which is why she asked if Adrian was somehow treating the girl badly, to which A.T.I. again hesitated and already answered yes, fearing a sidelong glance. Then she asked the girl that the prince must be really annoying her, isn't it true? A.T.I. awkwardly said yes, mentally ashamed, justifying herself that she had nothing to do with it. The Empress, exhaling heavily, answered correctly, although she does not have the slightest idea why he grew up like this, because Adrian was cute and pretty. A.T.I., looking at Ney, sipping tea, wondered if he could really be like that in childhood. I noticed the girl's amazement. Her Majesty said that she had such an expression on her face, as if she didn't believe it, to which she answered yes. She mentally asked how anyone could believe such a thing. The Empress began to remember how in childhood Adrian called her mommy. He was so sweet and inquisitive, admitting that she really missed those times while the crown prince himself asked her to skip unnecessary conversations. Having asked, Her Majesty took it as embarrassment that he did not want to call her as in childhood, to which he indifferently said that he did not want to, until A.T.I. realized that the guy really was kind and sweet. Reaching for the mug, the Empress was already turning to Lady Atien before she answered yes as usual. Raising her mug, she asked that she was uncomfortable being here, as if reading her thoughts. The girl awkwardly said yes, as if worried, but it was impossible to give her any other answer. Exhaling again, as if out of regret, the Empress lowered her head, saying that she knew it. Silence instantly settled in the hall, creating an uncomfortable moment that weighed on everyone in the room. Her Majesty herself broke the silence, clapping and admitting that she liked Lady Atien's sincerity. Her fun was interrupted by Adrian, formally calling her, as if he did not understand what was wrong with her. Wiping her eyes with what seemed like tears of joy, she asked her son what kind of stern expression was on his face, as if it would be better if they discussed him behind his back. She quickly approached the girl, taking her hand and massaging her. While she was so startled by surprise, the Empress explained that it seemed to her that the girl had kept her distance from her all the time, which could not help but upset her. But she was still glad to take advantage of this opportunity for them to become closer to each other and open up. Gently, she conveyed that Adrian had not yet matured, therefore he would often be cold, most likely why Her Majesty madly asked Lady Atienne to take care of him. After answering yes, the girl realized, slightly surprised by the thought, 
that simply by constantly answering yes, she had won the trust of the Empress. Immediately, she had a new request. Why, smiling, she explained that tomorrow a delegation would arrive from the Sirius Empire to attend her birthday. Her younger sister, Empress Veronica, and Crown Prince Ronan will also be there, conveying that she would like to leave her family with her. Then Adrian intervened, saying that he would do this by looking at his mother. She asked in surprise whether he would really meet and follow, as if incredulously. The Crown Prince just repeated yes, said that if that's all and she has nothing more to say, they leave, taking ATI by the hand. Without saying anything, they simply left. But even so, the Empress was happy, because she thought that this was such care from him for his bride. They walked down the corridor in silence, but even so, there was some tension between them. Suddenly, Adrian stopped, which puzzled the girl, looking at his back with some misunderstanding. As soon as he turned around, A.T.I. immediately felt excitement, starting to get nervous, modestly asking what it was. Approaching her face, the prince asked that she didn't ask because she didn't know, which only made the girl more tense. Awkwardly, the girl decided to ask if she had done something wrong, mentally only remembering that he himself had said to answer only yes. Without an answer, he only looked gloomily at A.T.I., because of which she mentally understood that today, the danger of death also did not recede. Having told the situation to the guys, Turney couldn't hold back his laughter and made a loud noise, repeating the girl's questions and answers like, Is Adrian bad? Yes, believing that his sister was crazy to say that. ATI didn't like what happened much, so she slightly threatened that if he laughed like that, he didn't have time to finish. Turney, having calmed down, turned his attention to the crown prince, who sighed nervously, stroking his forehead, causing the guy to ask if he was really crying. Adrian did not appreciate the guy's jokes. Without warning, he took out his sword, which is why Tierney moved away, saying, oh. Diano, without hiding his thoughts, noticed how cool his highness looked with a sword, which made A.T.I. mentally admit to herself that there was no one normal here. Turney, shaking the papers, asked the crown prince for a minute so that he would not move, and now he is holding an incredibly important document. The prince didn't believe it, telling him not to talk nonsense and just die now, but the guy shouted Essen, which made the prince flinch, looking at him. Grunting, Turney continued that he found out about the place where Essen is located, and he is the only one who knows where he is, and mockingly asked if he was still going to kill him. Roughly, Adrian demanded that he immediately say where, but the guy created a condition for him to lower his weapon, and then he would say. Sighing, the crown prince calmly lowered and sheathed his weapon, A.T.I. was a little surprised by this behavior, mentally asking if he really misses a person named Aeson so much. Maybe they really have true love. Turning to Turney, the guy asked him to quickly say where Aeson was now, to which the guy began to wave him off, so he asked so sharply that he abruptly forgot that he no longer remembers. Adrian was waiting for an answer, looking at Turney with some anger, which the guy noticed tensed up a little. Why, as he left for the door, he said that he actually didn't know. Slamming the door, he left the room in silence, where the crown prince's hatred quietly developed. Turning to Diano, he asked to immediately catch the guy, calling him a bastard, asking him to bring him here to him. Sparkling with anger, he added in a threatening voice that he would sentence him to death and throw him to hell, which is why he pulled out a sword, straining those remaining in the room. Diano decided to reassure his highness, saying that in fact the information had indeed been received, however, it was not accurate, so they were checking everything. Having clarified whether this was true, the prince asked to voice what kind of information, the knight said well, looked at A.T.I., as if hinting to the prince about her presence. Sitting down without looking away, Adrian said that everything was fine. He could talk. Diano said that perhaps they say that he wears women's clothing, to which the crown prince asked if that was why they could not find him. The knight calmly answered yes continuing that it would be necessary to expand the search area and definitely include girls in it, with which the prince agreed, asking to do so. Continuing that, in any case, he needs to be brought in safe and sound, it is impossible for him to get hurt somewhere, which is why the thought flashed through Adi's mind that this is definitely love between them. Diano, intervening, added that even though he ran away not so long ago, he had already missed the night Essen, which is why the girl only lit up more, realizing that they were definitely in love. The very birthday of the Empress arrived. There was a hubbub of noise on the street from people who had come in delegations from other countries to congratulate the Empress. 
Her Majesty's birthday was made an official holiday, so the commoners were ready to eat and drink, which is why the tables were full of food. Also, in honor of this event, a ball was held, and outside in the capital, a large festival was held. ATI watched this hubbub from behind the window, mentally realizing that at another time she would also go outside and enjoy the festival, but not today. Behind the girl, a rough male voice told her not to go out anywhere, causing her to twitch and close the curtains, turning around. Adrian stood behind her, explaining that because of the delegations, it was very noisy inside the palace, so she should be careful and try not to be seen by anyone. Approaching him, ATI honestly asked why it wasn't possible, why the guy turned to her and said that he didn't trust her. The girl continued that isn't everything in order inside the palace, to which she simply received a no, and the punishment was to stay only in her room. Still eager to go out, she clarified that, in fact, she could not meet the delegation halfway. Laughing awkwardly, receiving another rude response, that her help would be for her to simply sit in her place. Adrian added that she really wanted to meet the delegation without even learning the basics of becoming the bride of the crown prince, intending to humiliate the imperial family, and ATI, drooping, understood everything, saying that she obeyed and would sit quietly. Having left and closed the door, the girl was left alone while the guy went downstairs to the meeting. In silence, she lay on the bed, talking to herself that all studying was over for today. Realizing that she was bored, she mentally thought about going to the library, now thinking about it. Taking her bag and throwing in a couple of sweets, ATI came out and walked resolutely along the corridor, thinking that if she quietly went there, then everything would be all right. Before she even reached the exit, the girl shuddered at the meeting where the knight Deano was in front of her. Uncomfortably raising her head at him, ATI asked what he was doing here, slightly straining to think what he could convey. Having bowed, he only calmly and quietly greeted Madame Etienne. Already on the street, the girl met another group in the company of Deano, which was a little awkward. Clearing his throat, the knight imagined that this was his family. They usually live on their lands, but due to the fact that they visited the palace on the Empress's birthday, they were just greeting them. The guy who stood next to Diano bowed in front of the girl, greeted Lady Oviedo, introducing himself as Viscount Venedetto Shisinho. Then ATI realized that if this was the Viscount, then he was the successor of their family, or perhaps an older brother. In a whisper, he leaned towards the girl behind him, saying that she should say hello, pushing her a little forward. The baby was worried, but the girl leaned over to reassure her, smiling tenderly at her. The little girl, rustling her dress awkwardly, greeted with a slight crouch and introduced herself as Acacia. Instantly, the girl hid behind her brother, embarrassed. ATI instantly considered her an insane cutie, feeling touched in her soul, almost bursting with happiness. Having started to rummage through the bag, one of the brothers began to apologize to Atienne for the rude behavior of their younger sister. Leaning over, the girl leaned towards the baby, handing her candy, greeting her, conveying that she was glad to meet her. Slightly embarrassed, Acacia took the candy, looking at it and slowly smiling, relaxing. Raising her head, she showed Diano that she had candy, letting him hold it. Acacia, herself, taking the edges of the dress, sat down more boldly and deeply, bowing, thanking the girl. As if splashing blood from her nose, ATI mentally thought that it seemed to her that she was about to die from her cuteness. Then Diano's brother asked if it would be a little impudent, but he wanted to know where the girl was going, expressing that perhaps they took up a little of Lady Oviedo's time, while Diano himself opened the candy that they gave him. Awkwardly, ATI said that she was just going for a walk, knowing in her thoughts that she couldn't say that she was going to study. Here, Acacia drew the brother's attention to herself while they looked at her in puzzlement. The frowning girl said that it was her candy, asking Deanna why he was eating it, crying slightly. Thinking nervously, he admitted that he thought that she gave it to him so that he could eat, realizing that he was mistaken. Crying, she just briefly gave the candy to him to say hello, which made the guy feel awkward while the older brother consoled his sister. Both glanced at him askance, speaking rudely to Diano, putting pressure on him, which is why he began to make excuses, stuttering. Exhaling as if it was hopeless, the guy was really wrong. Why, ATI, rummaging in her purse, handed the girl two candies, handing them over, saying that she could eat the other one a little later. With tears, the little girl looked at these candies, a little worried that she could hear her heart beating. To calm her down, 
ATI smiled gently at her so that she wouldn't get upset, which is why Akashia smiled slightly. Turning to Diano, the girl emphasized to him not to take away or eat the sweets. He might as well keep this one, to which he guiltily said yes. Then she realized that she was already late. She said that they could continue their conversation, and she would go waving to the girl, smiling. Acacia already lit up with happiness. She clearly liked the girl, holding her candy. Instantly, Acacia began actively waving at her, to which ATI realized more that she was still a cutie. Adrian stood at the meeting. A carriage drove up to them, announcing that the Empress of Sirius, Lady Veronica, and her retinue had arrived. Lifting her dress, a girl in a beautiful outfit came out of the carriage, walking carefully on her heels. Bowing to her, the prince said that they had not seen each other for a long time, addressing her as Your Majesty Empress Veronica. Slightly embarrassed, smiling, the girl asked to leave these formalities. Their relationship can be treated differently. Agreeing with her, he called her aunt, saying that his little one was waiting for him inside, letting her through. Veronica was glad to finally meet her older sister. Although the path was a little boring, the girl believed that it was worth it, which is why Adrian invited her to follow him. Turning, she asked for a moment, shouting to Ronan, asking how long he planned to stay in the carriage. The guy in the carriage rudely answered her that he would not go, which outraged Veronica, saying that they had already arrived. Was he really going to eat and sleep in the carriage? Without having time to answer, the servants who were with them pulled the boy out of the carriage, despite his resistance and indignation, with orders to let him go and not touch him, as a member of the imperial family. Having placed him next to his mother, the crown prince, looking at him, mentally understood that no one would want to get involved with such a baby. Ronan, on the other hand, was not polite. In Adrian's opinion, he rudely asked why he was staring at him, which slightly angered him. Veronica slapped him on the head for such expressions, saying that the guy is his older cousin, so what kind of words should he say? Rubbing the back of his head, he only tisked, saying a rude obscenity which outraged his mother. The girl instantly demanded that he apologize, but the boy simply turned his head away without saying anything. Adrian said that everything was fine. She had nothing to worry about, and it was better to hurry because they were waiting for her inside. The aunt apologized for Ronan, explaining that he was still small and eccentric, so she was apologizing, but the prince calmly repeated that everything was fine. Entering the palace, Veronica began to discuss the guy that he had grown a lot since the last meeting, because she remembered him as tall as her baby. After asking him to take care of her son, allowing him to hit him several times if he did not obey. The maid began to call his highness, frightenedly looking for the baby, who had hidden somewhere. Rushing back and forth, she screamed and searched, not understanding where he had disappeared. But the boy sat in the bushes, laughing from his search, saying that he would not let himself be caught, because he had been playing hide-and-seek for several years. Then Ronan remembered what he had done in the palace, mentally scratching himself and asking if they would scold him if they managed to catch him, deciding not to risk it, especially since they could call the guards so that they would quickly catch him. The guy ran into the garden, where he hoped for a deserted place. Unfortunately, someone was making noise in the garden, so when he heard the rustling, the boy headed towards him, a little worried. Coming out from behind a bush, Ronan noticed that the voice sounded like an angel, trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. Having found the source of the voice, the boy was literally stunned, looking at her with admiration. ATI sat in front of him, humming a song and seeming to communicate with the doves that flew into her arms. Watching this, Ronan blushed slightly, feeling his heart beating loudly and realized, mentally calling her an angel. Stretching out her hand, ATI invited the dove that had flown to her singing in the garden to come to her finger. Before the bird had time to settle down, the boy quietly apologized, but still slightly scared the girl, scaring away the birds as well. Ronan watched dreamily, embarrassedly asking if she was an angel, holding out his hand to her. Having already clasped his hands, he asked if she was a fairy, but such questions only puzzled and confused the girl, not knowing what to answer. Awkwardly, ATI said that she was neither one nor the other, smiling awkwardly, amazed at his words. In disbelief, Ronan honestly responded that it couldn't be like that when he saw her clearly. ATI wondered what kind of boy he was if there was no boy of that age in the Afensen imperial family, suggesting that maybe he was from the ruling family of another country. But the palace where they are staying is located in the south, 
which is why they could come to the Foinsea Palace for a short while, but the girl's thoughts were interrupted by a boy who coughed, attracting her attention. Kneeling down, holding out your hand, starting to say that accidentally meeting a lady more beautiful than the light is truly a blessing from God. Why did he ask if she wouldn't mind drinking some juice with him, extending his hand further as A.T.I. looked on sheepishly, silently surprised? Giggling, she thanked him for the invitation, immediately apologizing that, unfortunately, she would have to refuse. Ronan was incredibly indignant and surprised by her refusal, immediately upset but noisily asking why. Adrian managed to come up from behind, grabbing him by the shoulder, answering for A.T.I. that she was his fiancée, calling the boy damn, which is why the boy twitched. Watching them in surprise, the guy said that this is where he was hiding, the kid, which outraged him, saying that he was not a kid, demanding to let himself go. Directly rushing towards A.T.I., he begged her to help him, calling her Lady Angel, because the devil, who was a prince, caught him, demanding that she scold him. Adrian looked at the girl, saying that this is how the boy calls her, and what will she do? To which she asked him to treat the child more gently, lowering his head as if in obedience. He said that's fine, that's what he'll do. Lifting him onto his shoulder, the prince asked A.T.I. if this was gentle enough treatment, to which the girl had to agree. Ronan didn't like it. Why he resisted? pounding on his back, begging the angel to save him because the devil wanted to eat him for dinner. The girl watched him awkwardly, not knowing what to say, embarrassed by his expressions towards her. Adrian repeated to the little one that the angel was his bride, and such requests were useless. Then the crown prince asked A.T.I. if she even knew who this fellow was, to which she shook her head, saying no. Turning around, the boy introduced himself to her, saying that he was Ronan, handing the lady an angel. The crown prince of Scipius, Ronan, added the one that made the girl more awkward, causing her to freeze in place. With a sharp realization, she said to mentally recognize where he came from here, remembering if she said something wrong, frozen in place. Without tenderness, Adrian sat Ronan down on the chair as he plopped down slightly. Stretching his shoulder, he called him a malingerer, looking sternly that he was clearly annoyed. Jumping up, the boy began to express his indignation, shouting at the guy that the devil who dared to separate him from the angel was a damn Satan. Despite being asked what was wrong with his eyesight, Ronan continued to insist that the girl was an angel, causing the guy to turn away, thinking. Remembering how A.T.I. hovered at the end, he thought that there was nothing angelic about her, only ridiculous. Then Adrian suggested that the boy return to Sirius. He will take responsibility for this and send him back. It's not difficult for him, but Ronan just screamed negatively that he doesn't want to. He remains where Lady Angel is. The guy noticed that recently the little guy was squeaking and didn't want to be here, asking to come back. Calling him a fool, Ronan explained that this was before he saw and met a beautiful girl. Having knocked, Turney came to them, calling Adrian, not knowing that he was busy smiling. Seeing that his friend was busy, he was slightly puzzled and froze. Approaching him, Tierney nodded awkwardly and asked who it was, to which the prince said that there was one which outraged and angered Ronan. Snapping his fingers, Tierney quickly understood everything, saying that this is how it is, which angered the little one more, rudely asking who else he was. Ignoring Ronan, Adrian looked at Tierney, wanting to know why he had come to him. Approaching the prince, the guy quietly whispered that they had found out where Eason was, which surprised him. The guy directly asked what they would do, to which Adrian asked who even knew about this, to which he quickly replied that only he was the prince now. The crown prince asked not to tell anyone else, to quietly catch him and bring him here, looking slightly menacingly at the guy. It was already dark outside, especially since a small reception in honor of welcoming the visiting delegation from Sirius was held in the main hall of the Florence Palace. Although for members of the imperial families, it was a light reception among relatives, all the aristocrats of high position were present. And, of course, Gabrielle was among them. As soon as Adrian heard that she was there too, he immediately took Viola with him, or rather, the girl who was pretending to be Atien. The girl asked if she could already go, to which the guy reassured her that she didn't need to think about it too seriously, because he didn't expect anything from her, so she could leave after standing quietly there for a while. A.T.I. was a little worried after all, it could be risky, which is why she asked if it would be a little dangerous. Sighing, Adrian replied that it was still a simple family party, nothing like that. Already approaching the door, 
At the creak of the opening door, all the guests in the hall turned around, looking at the new guests who had arrived. Before she even had time to enter, ATI immediately heard the hubbub and whispering of the guests, which put a little pressure on her, especially the number of guests. Looking at Adrian, the girl mentally cursed, because he said that it was a simple family party and there were clearly more guests. The guy, taking her by the back, led her forward through the entire crowd, not paying attention to the looks that they attracted to him. Approaching her mother and aunt's table, the crown prince greeted them, apologizing for being late. Taking ATI on his shoulders, emphasizing, he said that his bride was very shy, to which the girl mentally understood that if she moved incorrectly, she would be finished, that she needed to pull herself together. Having bowed, the girl soon apologized to Her Majesty for being late. The Empress just smiled, rejoicing, and said that everything was fine and Lady Adienne had nothing to worry about. Turning to the lady sitting next to her, affectionately calling her Veka, saying that this child would become her daughter-in-law, asking if she wasn't graceful. Veronica raised her head to the couple, smiling, thoughtful. A guy stood in front of her as she believed that she would be alone all her life. But he brought this girl in front of her. Looking at Adrian, she replied that she thought they would make a wonderful married couple. Bowing, the crown prince flatteringly thanked her, turning to look at all the guests standing behind him. Returning his gaze to the empress, he asks, and Maria, to which she answered, exhaling, that that girl said that she had a headache and left quite recently. Bowing her head, leaning on her hand, she continued that that girl was suffering so much that even when Gabriel spoke to her, she could never answer her, to which ATI awkwardly thought that maybe she just didn't want to. The crown prince, looking at the girl, thought that the emperor had not come either. And since they showed their faces, he believed that they could leave after they had been here for a while, while the guy was walking in their direction. Unexpectedly, Ronan ran into ATI with the words of his little sister, hugging her, which surprised her even his presence, calling him his highness. The boy indignantly swore that the girl should not dare to be so formal towards him because otherwise he would feel some kind of distance between them. Without having time to object, the empress immediately interrupted her, confirming that they were literally family with her. So there was no need to worry about it, which Veronica agreed with, adding that they were not strangers either, so everything was fine. Still, Ronan was asked to be less rude with the future wife of Crown Prince Afanino, to which the boy agreed, hitting his chest. Sparkling with happiness, he began to ask his sister everything, starting with how much he missed her, and whether she missed her, which slightly puzzled the girl, forcing her to ask that they had already met during the day. Ronan just grinned with more joy and said that that's why he was even more bored, looking a little askance at the prince. Taking ATI away, he said that it was better for them to play in the other direction, to which the girl agreed as they walked under Adrian's gaze. The crown prince turned to the empress, bowed to them, and apologized for being away. Not far away, Ronan asked ATI if she had been to the Sirius Empire, promising that when she arrived, he would show her the palace, which clearly pleased the girl, especially going abroad. Turning around slightly, she twitched at the sight of Adrian, who mentally conveyed to her not to create problems, which slightly pressed her, awkwardly refusing Ronan's offer to inspect the palace someday when the girl was able to come, the crown prince looked askance, mentally understanding, frowning, that this fellow did not have time to think of it. Then suddenly the music in the hall changed, which ATI immediately thought about as she listened. Ronan suddenly extended his hand, inviting the girl to dance, which made her even ask again. Just looking back at Adrian, she was immediately frightened by his menacing gaze, forcing her to stop, which slightly tensed the girl. Leaning over, she awkwardly apologized refusing that today would be difficult, so it would be better next time when the opportunity arises, to which the boy, upset, said that he wanted to dance today. Upset, he demanded that his little sister must dance with him next time, demanding a promise. To convince him of their promise, they made a pinky oath, where ATI promised but was immediately asked what kind of gift she liked. Adrian only watched them out of the corner of his eye, listening while the girl replied that she liked a long life. Suddenly, the crown prince heard footsteps approaching in his direction, causing him to turn around, trembling. Gabrielle walked in his direction, clicking her heels, spreading an unpleasant aura next to her. Approaching closer to the company, where Ronan was interested in the girl's answer, she began to explain that this was something incredibly valuable, before Adrian grabbed her. Twitching, she turned around, slightly frightened, wondering what it was, His Highness, 
to which he asked to go in the other direction, mentally not understanding why she was so surprised. After leaving the hall, the three of them quietly and silently walked through the park next to the palace, despite the dark time. Suddenly, someone called out to his highness, causing the guy to tremble tensely, trying to guess. Turning around, ATI also turned around behind him, wondering who called him. Seeing his friend, the prince exhaled that it was just Diano, who, approaching, explained that he saw that they had gone here and followed them. Having relaxed, the guy exhaled, praising the knight for his decision, thinking a little himself. His gaze soon fell on the little girl who was next to Diano, causing her to flinch. Quickly realizing, Akashia bowed, greeting His Highness the Crown Prince. Diano apologized that his brother had left so she was on him, but Adrian interrupted him, saying that everything was fine, they could stay here. Acacia was a little worried and worried about being here. Her gaze quickly rose to ATI, which the girl herself noticed, awkwardly looking back. Already rejoicing, the little girl greeted her, calling Leo Viedo, repeating her name for her, blushing with happiness. Smiling, ATI thought how cute she was, greeting her back and asking if they had seen each other today, which only made the girl happier, because she didn't think she would recognize her. The girl immediately asked Acacia how she was received, why they started chatting while the guys looked at them, as if waiting. Finishing her conversation, the little girl only asked Miss Aidy to speak to her informally. Bowing her head, she suggested that they just call her Acacia, to which the girl readily agreed, while the girl was glad that she would have such a sweet little sister. Here Ronan entered the conversation, also asking his sister to speak with him informally, to which ATI asked if he was sure. Holding her hand, the boy chuckled, looking smugly at the girl. Acacia, shuddering, looked indignantly, not understanding that he was even doing such a thing. Ronan rudely demanded that the girl greet him, which she did, bowing to him. Even so, there was a very palpable tension between them, which puzzled ATI. Ronan, looking at Akashia, thought that he was going to make sure that his little sister was only his. Having received the same serious look from the girl, she mentally also did not understand what kind of strange guy was next to her sister. A.T. tried to calm them down, to somehow call them, but they were already opposite each other looking menacingly that some hatred was felt. The girl's eyes ran from side to side to the children, all trying to attract her attention to themselves. On each side, they simply pulled her towards them, not listening to her asking for a minute. Adrian noticed that these little ones were very funny, watching this situation, which Dino did from behind. Then Ronan looked at the crown prince out of the corner of his eye, chuckled, darkly thinking about something, looking at the guy. Turning to the girl, he said loudly, as if on purpose, that he would also call her ATI, which slightly surprised the girl. Wanting to say that she didn't care, she twitched and saw the guy's gaze tensed slightly, evaporated, thinking about what to answer, looking at him. Acacia also heard this cunning idea of the prince, which is why she looked at ATI, silently thinking. Soon she also shouted that she would call her little sister ATI, as if rejoicing at her no less cunning idea. The girl, touched by the fact that the girl was very sweet, did not mind, which made the little girl happy, but did not make the boy happy at all, looking at her and swearing indignantly. Approaching her menacingly, he said that he was friends with ATI, and she could get away with it, to which the girl noticed that they did not seem so friendly. The girl laughed awkwardly while the little one actively argued that she was no longer listening. Diano awkwardly apologized to the crown prince for Akasha, not understanding himself because usually the girl is not like that. To which the guy replied that everything is fine, it's better to leave them. Adrian quietly approached ATI, taking her hand, which slightly surprised her, mentally asking if it was his highness. Lightly pulling the girl, the guy said after him, which surprised her more, but she walked calmly. The children continued to argue and kept arguing until Akashia suggested asking directly who she was stronger friends with, which Ronan agreed with. Turning to her, calling, they saw only Diano, who was layering, awkwardly watching their argument. The kids were quite surprised when they turned around and didn't see the girl, even crumbling slightly. Akashia asked her brother where to go with ATI, to which he pondered, slightly at a loss. Then Ronan began to think, quickly realizing mentally calling that this clever devil had stolen her, worrying. ATI and Adrian walked in the other direction in complete silence until the girl realized that she felt quite cheerful while the guy sighed. Then the girl told him to look at the stars, causing the crown prince to turn his head and look slightly puzzled at the sky. 
ATI, raising her head with him, said that they were very beautiful while Adrian looked at her, a little surprised that she was saying. While the girl was enjoying the sky and stars, the prince realized that it seemed like he was seeing her like this for the first time. It's the first time he's seen her smile like that, awkwardly looking at her with some admiration for how happy she is. ATI had already turned to him, looking into his eyes when he realized that she was beautiful. She asked awkwardly, calling out to his highness as he looked at her in admiration. Realizing that she literally saw him while he was admiring, they stood in silence. Only the rustling of leaves could be heard. ATI quickly realized that he had nothing to say, which is why, smiling, she joyfully noted that now he was in a good mood. Adrian almost didn't understand this expression. He asked again that he was in a good mood, looking puzzled. Modestly putting her hand to her face, the girl awkwardly said that some time ago, he continued to be angry all the time. The crown prince continued, not understanding what she meant, asking again about being angry, and he kept looking at the girl which already made her a little awkward. Shyly straightening her hair, she quietly said that she shouldn't have said that, apologizing. Holding his head, Adrian remained silent, then said no, which the girl no longer understood. He corrected himself, saying that she did not apologize, which did not clarify his words to the girl at all. Looking at him in response, A.T.I. asked, not understanding what he meant. Thoughtful, he said that she simply paused, thinking further about what to say. Just hold out until my mother's birthday, said Adrian, looking at her without that feeling. After all, he had already found out where Eason was, which slightly surprised A.T.I., but not to say that he made him happy. Adrian added that then he would leave her alive, which was slightly pressing. Madame Lucy... Clapping and groaning praised the girl that she really was getting better day by day. ATI could not believe such words from the maid, happily asking if it was true. Mentally, after she heard that Adrian would leave her alive, she continued to hold on every day, rejoicing that everything worked out. Lucy added that she still had a long way to go, which made the girl droop a little. The maid taught ATI a mysterious smile, asking again while the girl asked if it was normal, but Madame asked more mysteriously, Smiling as it happened, almost trembling, the girl continued to hear that it was not enough and that a little more grace was needed. Giving up, exhaling, and holding her back, Lucy said in frustration that she thought she would succeed today. Having told her to see how to smile, ATI was already surprised, mentally asking how she makes such a facial expression. Madame began to explain that a skillful noble lady should be able to share her opinion with one smile, but of course, she would also need a look that could recognize such a smile, because noble society is a kind of battlefield on which other people's feelings are easily deceived. Listening awkwardly, ATI wondered if she had succeeded, modestly answering that this is how it works. Suddenly, the door opened with a creak, from which Diano came out saying that Acacia wanted to meet with Mrs. ATI, which the girl was happy about. Madame Lucy calmly said that she could rest for about 30 minutes, to which the girl then quickly told the knight that if the girl waited a little, she would come to her. The maid noticed that the girl loved children, to which ATI, of course, answered yes. Madame added that it is good to love children, which slightly alerted the girl, causing her to turn around a little. Lucy continued that she had better be careful around children, looking back at ATI. Little children are very sharp, Lucy said, where she already imagined Ronan walking in the garden. Acacia actively waved her hand to the girl whom she had been waiting for and inviting to be with her. Slightly embarrassed, ATI happily called out to Akashia, smiling. Holding hands, the happy little girl said that she missed her sister very much, and the girl reciprocated. Immediately, a rustle and a question were heard from the bushes, and they missed him, which is why the girls shuddered when they saw Ronan. Having stood, the boy was clearly unhappy that they were here together, looking at them indignantly while the girl tried to understand where he came from. Looking at ATI, he said that he never heard her answer when he asked. The girl seemed to deliberately skip the question, saying that he should call her little sister. Continuing to be indignant, he still wanted to know if ATI missed him, while Akasia was indignant that he took the girl's attention like that. Grabbing onto ATI, she rudely said that her sister could not miss him, which slightly surprised the girl and shocked the boy. Indignantly, Ronan said that it was not her answer he wanted to hear, shouting and swearing at the girl. Holding ATI, Akashia said that she answered for her, because she is a kind girl. So out of politeness, she will say that she missed him, because they feel the same thing, so she can find out. 
Ronan didn't listen to her, because he didn't think that their thoughts were the same, thinking that ATI was very bored, why the kids started arguing again, what the girl was watching. Mentally, she thought that they didn't like each other, but now she realized that they were so cute. She knew, or rather, thought that these were just childhood quarrels between future friends, imagining their strong and sweet friendship. Having said that they had become friends, they both loudly answered no at the same time, looking somehow angrily at ATI. Ronan wanted to say that there was hardly anyone with such a little thing, but Akaja instantly interrupted him. Who would say that? Wanting to distract them from their quarrel by leaving her thoughts on their friendship, ATI revealed that she had brought cookies, asking who wanted to try. Akashia immediately raised her hand sharply, shouting her name, while Ronan looked at her and said that he did too. Diano observed this situation, slightly surprised at how quickly the atmosphere became friendly and peaceful, with ATI treating the already calm children. The children chewed the cookies contentedly, smiling and slightly embarrassed. The girl calmly exhaled, having managed to prevent another argument between the boys. Ati's gaze quickly went blank, flying in her thoughts, asking herself if she would feel the same way if her youngest were alive. Akasya, having finished eating, soon looked up at the girl, noticing her sadness. The girl quietly called her, but even so he twitched a little, already looking at her. Leaning towards them, she asked if they liked the cookies, smiling brightly again when Akashia answered yes. Ronan honestly said that it was too sweet, so he wouldn't eat it, but they are quite tasty because ATI gave them. Even so, the boy was already taking another blushing slightly and turning his gaze away, which is why the girl realized that he still liked it. Slightly thoughtful, Akashia looked at the girl, imagining the crown prince she saw with her. Pulling ATI, she asked her little sister why she liked His Highness the Prince, which slightly surprised both her and Ronan. Here the girl went into a bit of a stupor, because in truth, she didn't like him. Why didn't she know what to say to the guys? Thinking about what to say, trying to formulate and stuttering, the little girl looked at her. Akasia looked especially inspired. Having said that he was sensitive, she immediately imagined a distorted image of him in this, realizing that she was slightly lying. Therefore, adding that she probably angered Ronan a little while, the girl was sparkling. Sitting down in front of Akashia, she said that she thought the most important thing was to pay attention to the character of men. Having added that, or for example humanity, the girl repeated that she understood character and humanity, but Ronan thought most of all about these words. The boy lay in bed still thinking about these questions, not understanding at all. Jumping out of bed, he said out loud, thoughtfully, that it was somehow strange, while his mother was reading something. Having understood, he said that they almost never meet, in the sense of ATI and Adrian. He mentally replayed that as a result of his observations over several days, when he saw ATI. Ronan realized that mostly only the same guys, those two, were looking for a girl. Plopping back onto the bed, he didn't understand if he loved the girl, why he didn't even come to her while he was so bored every day that he seemed to be dying of anticipation. Veronica looked at him and honestly asked what kind of terrible plan he was making again. Turning to her, he honestly said that, in fact, he told his assumptions about Ayen and Adrian. Soon the couple stood on the carpet in front of the Empress, ATI mentally asking why they were here and they were called so suddenly. Sighing, Her Majesty began that she had heard an incredibly sad story, calling them her children. Adrian sharply and rudely asked what kind of nonsense she heard again, which both girls were surprised by, but his mother said that it was rude. She said that they told her that they had a fight, which slightly shocked the crown prince. Looking sideways at ATI out of the corner of his eye, he asked in a whisper what she had done again, to which she just as quietly said that she had done nothing. The empress continued that many people say that the future bride and her groom look very gloomy, but she was proud of them. Among people who consider marriage only a business, she thought that they would become a couple who truly loved and cared for each other, asking them how romantic it would be. Continuing, the Empress said that she and His Majesty loved each other and got married regardless of their families, and it was like a miracle to which Adrian frowned irritably, saying that it was her story again. Her Majesty continued that she was very happy that her son, like her, also found his soulmate, because she was going to accept any person as long as he loved him, to which the guy, clearly already tired, asked directly what she wanted to say by this. Realizing that he didn't need it, 
She said that they told her that they don't walk without holding hands. Adrian immediately lifted the castle from his hands, demonstrating that even now they are holding hands, which made A.T.I. happy. After remaining silent, the Empress said that they had not kissed, which made both of them flinch, looking slightly surprised. The girl, hoping for the guy, looked at him and quietly asked in a whisper what to do, and let his highness say something, but he was just silent. Realizing that if things continued like this, she would die, she sharply shouted that they were kissing, which surprised Adrian. Turning to her, he asked in a whisper if they were because he was a little shocked by her words. She answered him in a whisper that how could he be surprised, looking with some malice, as if she had to tell the truth. Why did she add that he would rather nod, as if it were true, which he did, clenching his fists? A.T.I. continued that of course they kissed, they just did it in a place where no one would see them. Adrian supportively asked his mother if they could show this to others, which she was slightly surprised by. Calmly answering that she didn't know, A.T.I. calmly exhaled, as if they had managed it. Smiling, the girl added that she was very shy and in public kept a certain distance from his highness, apparently. That's why such a misunderstanding arose. Adding that she would also like to maintain the status of the bride of the crown prince, while Adrian watched her in a little surprise, while the Empress praised A.T.I. for her thoughts. Looking at her, the prince thought that she was usually so scared that she was constantly shaking, and now, when the girl had already looked at him in response, sparkling with happiness, she added in a whisper that, thank God everything worked out. Slightly surprised, he answered her indeed, feeling his heart beat from her gaze. Having excused themselves from the Empress, they walked along the corridor together in some silence. Then Adrian asked when they kissed, to which A.T.I. quickly said that of course never, while the prince continued that a little earlier she had said something different. Interrupting, the girl replied that Her Majesty the Empress was simply worried, already droopingly wondering if she'd done something wrong. As he watched, the guy noticed that she was making that face again, as if with some irritation, noting that usually he wouldn't even pay attention to such a lie. Stopping, he couldn't understand why he continued to think about it, why, after a slight pause, he asked if A.T.I. had ever kissed anyone. Hesitating, the girl blushed and said that no, she hadn't had her first kiss yet, looking away. The prince only said that this is how it is, watching her, extending his hand to her. He soon said that he would take her to Lily's palace, while the girl stood in some confusion. Adrian asked, holding out his hand, if she would take it, to which A.T.I. raised her eyes and looked at him. After thinking... The girl awkwardly stretched her hand in response, mentally understanding that since she even heard this, it means that she was worried for good reason. A little earlier it was the same. It seems that what was difficult for her was easy for His Highness most likely. She thought that he took her hand without any feelings, asking herself if this was true. Looking at him as she walked into the palace, she mentally hated herself for holding out hopes, even knowing that they were in vain. Looking at Adrian, A.T.I. apologized and called him Highness, expecting a response. Looking at her out of the corner of his eye, he asked what, stopping. A.T.I. quietly asked why he hated Lady Gabriel, which slightly surprised him. Adrian, after a short silence, asked what she really meant, that even after he saw her, she didn't know. Hesitating slightly, the girl explained that it seemed to her that he had another reason besides that one. Repeating her question again, introducing the lady, he said that this girl is cruel, selfish, and does not think about anyone but herself, so she does not worry about the death of others. Squeezing her hand a little harder, he added that others were also no different from her, wanting to add something else. She mentally understood because he loves that person while the girl became a little sad. Twitching A.T.I. asked herself in surprise why she was upset. Awkwardly, she said that she hoped that he would soon find his bride, which slightly puzzled the prince. Looking at her, he wondered if she really disliked replacing him so much, to which A.T.I. asked, slightly surprised, if she had said something wrong without receiving an answer, while Adrian noticed that it had spoiled his mood so much. Happy Madame Lucy, clapping her hands, joyfully announced that today they would study the rules of etiquette during tea drinking. A.T.I., slightly surprised, asked what the etiquette is for tea drinking, while Lucy began to explain that this is a basic and at the same time, very difficult place in noble society. Usually, during tea drinking, there are so-called lines of personal relationships, and according to them, people drink tea in a certain way and exchange information. The most important thing here is that the line. But Madame was interrupted by a guest who greeted Lady Atienne. 
Turning towards the voice, Lucy remained silent and the girl said hello immediately becoming silent. Quickly realizing who it was, she added to Lady Gabriel that she had come to see them. The maid was more interested in why she came to Lily's palace, because you can't just enter here without an invitation, to which the lady only smiled. Grunting as she twirled her fan, Gabriel replied that she had received permission from Her Majesty the Empress. The maid only remained silent, looking at her slightly dissatisfied. While Lucy went up to talk to the maid, the lady turned to ATI, saying that she came because she needed to tell her something, why the girl immediately asked what she wanted. Gabrielle continued that they say that those two have not had a very good relationship lately, where ATI immediately felt, mentally understanding that she had come here just to hurt her with this. The girl jumped up sharply, putting her hand on her chest, and said that this was not so, and it couldn't be like that. The lady, coming closer, joked that there was no need to pretend that everything was wrong, but ATI did not stop, saying that it was all not true. Behind the girls, a male voice rudely asked what was going on here, approaching them as they turned around. ATI awkwardly said that it was His Highness who was looking sternly in their direction. That very minute, Gabriel stood opposite him, beaming with joy, greeting the guy, asking if he had come here to meet her, to which she received an irritated no. Here, ATI asked with some sharpness whether it was possible for a lady to stay here for so long. It seemed as if she had nothing to do, with which she did not agree, claiming that everyone was looking for her and she was constantly busy. Noticing the time, Gabrielle said that it was already so late, so she would do better, and next time she would stay longer, blowing the prince a kiss and words of love. ATI thought a little, because it turns out that those rumors about their remoteness spread very widely. She mentally understood that she, like the previous girl, could tolerate being ignored. But then she was a maid. But Atienne should not tolerate this. Atienne is the crown prince's fiancé, and she must return this place to that person before Lady Gabrielle leaves because she often turned to them. Without hesitation, the girl turned sharply at Adrian, looking at him while he looked in surprise. Having asked what it was, she suddenly blurted out that he would quickly kiss her. But with complete confidence and determination, which slightly surprised the guy. Taking her by the shoulders, Adrian awkwardly asked. She paused, not believing the words she heard. Continuing, he said that she said that this was her first kiss, still surprised by the situation. ATI said more boldly that everything was fine, as if with some impatience. Leaning towards her, pressing her to himself, seeing her surprised face, he quietly apologized, taking her by the face. The maid standing behind, having stopped whispering, Watch this scene in surprise, some embarrassed, some covering their mouths in surprise. Hugging the girl around the waist, the crown prince pulled her into a kiss, closing his eyes, which the girl did, placing her hand on his chest. Finishing the kiss, Adrian realized that he was definitely just going to pretend now, but he moved closer to ATI. Mentally asking himself why no one warned him that kissing was so pleasant, he carried the girl into another, hugging him tighter. When Gabrielle left, she mentally hated ATI, considering her a weakling and that she couldn't answer normally. Then strange sounds were heard behind her. Why, asking herself what these sounds were, she turned around, wanting to find out, turning sharply in the direction of the sound. Gabrielle looked at the couple who were kissing, as if not embarrassed by her, not understanding why her Adrian was kissing another girl. Clenching her hands and glaring at them angrily, she did not understand why ATI pestered her boyfriend, promising that she would definitely make the girl regret it. Soon, it was already being discussed everywhere that the couple had kissed even the maids in the corridor, whispered without hesitation about the new event. ATI watched them from the window in embarrassment, surprised that talk of their kiss had spread so quickly. Lost in thought, she wanted to know, out of curiosity, whether all kisses were as pleasant as with the prince. Maybe the kiss was pleasant because the crown prince was good, but such a thought really confused her. Here, Madame Lucy had already found her, asking if she had forgotten that the celebration of the Empress's birthday was just around the corner. Without waiting for an answer, she immediately warned the girl that her days would be spent in a stricter environment, which surprised ATI that it would be even stricter. Lucy continued that this is an important event where there will be many foreign delegations, so it is obvious that the girl should be so beautiful that everyone literally falls in love with her. ATI only awkwardly asked if it was possible to pull this off, smiling modestly. The maid answered her with complete confidence that, of course, it was possible, 
but there was no point in asking such a thing. Pointing to a pile of dresses, she immediately announced that everything here, all the dresses were prepared to a special order. Madame Lucy voiced without hesitation that it had been so long since she had dressed up someone other than Mr. Eason, beaming with joy while the girl was a little modest. Sparkling, she said that today they would choose a dress, tomorrow there would be accessories, the day after tomorrow a fan and shoes, while A.T.I. sadly realized that she probably wouldn't be able to come to her senses at all. The day of the birthday celebration has arrived, and the girl has already been dressed up in a beautiful outfit. Lucy quietly said that she knew so, slightly muffling her words as if with some kind of sadness. A.T.I. turned to her, wanting to understand what it was, until the maid added that she was not mistaken after all, which only puzzled her more. Turning back to the mirror, Madame asked if Lady Atienne liked everything, to which the girl honestly admitted that she did not recognize herself, as if it were not her at all. Lucy, flattered, said that she had said that the girl would be incredibly beautiful. Lightly pushing her in the back, she urged her to walk faster and conquer everyone there. A.T.I., somewhat confused, said that there must be many beautiful ladies in the hall besides herself. Madame Lucy was a little surprised, wondering if she really didn't trust her skills so much, why she suggested that if it was so difficult for her to adapt, then ask His Highness his opinion. The girl awkwardly asked if it was His Highness the Crown Prince, but the maid only pushed her towards the exit, hurrying her. Lifting her dress in a hurry, she didn't know that Adrian was waiting for her, ready outside the door. Approaching the exit, A.T.I. awkwardly looked to the side out of the corner of her eye, slightly surprised. Leaning on the door, he closed his eyes and folded his hands, waiting for her, as if not deliberately spying. Straightening her hair and veil, the girl did not expect the guy to open his eyes, which is why she stared back, frozen. Awkwardly removing her hands from her face, A.T.I. quietly asked what was wrong, because his look didn't tell her anything. Without looking away, Adrian silently watched, as if trying to come up with something right now. Looking away, the guy sharply and rudely said that now it was quite possible to look at the girl, to which A.T.I. was mentally offended because she dressed up so diligently. Then from the corridor came the voice of a guy asking if the girl was ready, which slightly puzzled her but irritated the prince. Turney approached them smiling, almost sparkling, asking what it was in front of him. Coming closer, he immediately noticed how beautiful A.T.I. was, telling her about this that it even seemed to him that it was not her at all. Adrian was clearly annoyed by this, so he took the girl by the shoulder and told him to fuck off, which slightly surprised her, forcing her to look up at the guy. Turney looked at the crown prince mockingly and said that how could he care so much about his partner. Glancing angrily at his friend, Adrian told him to stop talking nonsense and let him go where he was going, which even slightly surprised A.T.I., Running away, Tierney wished good luck and all the best, which slightly embarrassed the girl. Turning around, Adrian said that they should go too, looking at her. Sighing, A.T.I. mentally understood that today was finally the day, and if she could cope, she would be able to survive. Opening the doors, they creaked open into the hall where the celebration was to take place. Someone in the hall greeted them, introducing them as the majestic future of Athens, Crown Prince Hadrian who stood nearby and the future wife of the crown prince, daughter of the Oviedo family, Lady Adienne. Holding hands, the girl resolutely looked forward, slightly worried but holding on. Distracted, A.T.I. began to examine the hall and the guests in it. The hubbub gradually subsided, looking up where the couple was coming out, which slightly made the girl feel awkward because all eyes were on them. Squeezing Adrian's hand tighter, the girl was clearly very worried about this, especially since this is the day when her fate will be decided. The crown prince looked at her in a rather soft voice and told her to come here. Hearing her heartbeat, A.T. awkwardly thought that everything was fine. She trained and prepared a lot. She needed to calm down, looking back at the guy. Even while walking, she looked at the prince, what he did in response, why they walked, looking at each other, not paying attention to the crowd. Looking at the Empress's place, A.T.I. saw a man, realizing that he was the man, tensed slightly. There sat an important person whom she needed to deceive today. It was the Emperor of this country, Athenino Charles. The Empress impatiently called them so that her daughter-in-law would come here especially quickly. Adrian rudely asked if she really couldn't see him, to which she gasped and asked if he was here, while A.T.I. mentally understood that these two were always the same. Smiling, the Empress remarked, 
telling the girl that their daughter-in-law was still beautiful today. A.T.I. smiled awkwardly and thanked her, slightly embarrassed by such a compliment. The emperor cleared his throat and said yes, confirming his wife's words, while the girl was slightly surprised. All the time his gaze was directed at her, literally looking at her without emotion. Swallowing, looking back, she noticed that even after saying one word, greatness was immediately felt in his voice. Soon getting up, the emperor simply replied that since they saw the two of them, he would go, which was a little puzzling. Having only accompanied the couple with words for them to get married quickly, as the Empress wants, A.T.I. mentally did not understand what he was talking about, especially since she was so worried, but she was glad that everything was fine, that nothing had happened. When leaving, the Emperor again congratulated her on her birthday, to which Adrian also said that they would also go, placing his hand on the girl's shoulder, which slightly surprised her. The Empress only smiled and said that she did not know what happened between them, but it became much more pleasant to look at them than before. A.T.I. awkwardly thanked her, slightly surprised, while she wished them a good time. Walking away silently, they no longer held each other and did not look. Only A.T.I. was mentally happy that she survived, in any case, since she was not discovered, it means she survived. Adrian just turned to her and said to try, to which the girl nodded to him more decisively. From behind, a female voice called the prince and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. Why did the girl and the guy turn around to look? Behind them were Veronica and Ronan, who joyfully called A.T.I., while the aunt was wondering if the future wife of the crown prince was doing well. To the exclamations of the boy, the girl answered that she was, and also whether Her Majesty was doing well, receiving a nod. Blushing slightly when the boy received the girl's attention, he brightly and loudly asked to go dance with him. Adrian looked askance at the little guy while A.T.I. hesitated, lost in thought and looking at the guy out of the corner of her eye. Having reminded the girl that last time she promised him to dance, he did not have time to finish when his mother's hand fell on his shoulder, grabbing him. Having looked at him, Veronica said that he had to go somewhere with her, to which Ronan was a little upset. Holding hands, Her Majesty left, telling the boy that he needed to go and congratulate his aunt on her birthday, while he turned around calling A.T.I., the girl noticed that at such moments it is difficult to take a breath, sighing, noticing that she was already tired. But this was just the beginning. She glanced to the sides out of the corner of her eye, as if to make sure she was safe to rest. Immediately the girl noticed some girl mentally trying to understand this person. Before she knew it, that voice called out to her brother, to which they stood silently, looking at her. It was Princess Marie, Adrian's sister, who was very unhappy about something. Bowing slightly, she greeted the two of them, to which the prince said there was no need, asking what she wanted, while A.T.I. sweated slightly with excitement. While they were discussing that the girl had lost one of her maids, the bride was a little nervous that they were talking about her, trying to hide their face. Adrian rudely asked if it was necessary to discuss this here. Marie remained silent irritably, looking at him angrily while the girl tried to hide, feeling only her heart beat from excitement. The girl only bowed with a sigh saying that then next time she would go to the palace, hoping to definitely meet him, wishing him a pleasant evening, quietly asking Adrian if she had revealed her. He only rudely said that if she had, she would have to die. A.T.I. felt like she was in a minefield, and the only thing she could be happy about was that almost no one approached because of the prince. Although everyone around was whispering that it was already clear that someone was not sure whether Lady Arienne was the same because her height had become below. Mm. As she walked away, she already heard someone suggesting that she was wearing low heels, having already switched to discussing the beauty of the crown prince. A.T.I. calmly exhaled, rejoicing that, thank God, she was not discovered so she would hold out until the end. Adrian sharply told her not to smile and to lower her gaze, to which the girl hesitated and said that she was not smiling, it was just a smile of reassurance. The hubbub was everywhere, and the crowd was already staring at the guys squeezing through. Between them, Turney and some man walked towards the girl and the prince, asking him to let them pass and separate a little. Having already seen them, the guy raised his hand and actively waved, calling A.T.I., while the man next to him seemed to be ashamed of him. Looking at him, Adrian told her to pretend like she didn't know him, to which she nodded slightly. When Turney arrived, he was all sparkling and smiling at them. Noticing that the girl was avoiding her gaze, he directly asked why she was doing this, to which she responded by asking who was walking so straight, cutting up the entire dance hall. A.T.I. looked over his shoulder, trying to understand who came with him in the first place. 
This would be an older man of respectable age with a cane in his hands. Adrian, looking at him, only said that they had not seen each other for a long time, adding the Marquis of Oviedo. The same one bowed, while ATI realized his last name because he turns out to be Turney's father. Then she realized that if she was the younger sister, then he was her father, looking a little surprised. Slightly shocked, the girl looked at him, worried, until he awkwardly smiled at her reaction. ATI awkwardly put her hand to her face, looking away and saying, which means she was running her eyes. Having said his name, she immediately saw Turney waving his arms, whispering her name and showing no, turning his finger to his lips. He clearly said Papa several times so that she could understand. Looking at Marquis, she mentally wondered if he was really telling him to call her his dad while he flinched at her gaze. Having made up her mind, ATI leaned over slightly and quietly called him dad, causing the man to flinch slightly as he looked at her. Leaning on his cane, the man replied, Yeah. To which the girl laughed awkwardly and looked at him in silence. Other people were watching them, and Adrian heard them whispering that they thought they weren't on very good terms. Looking at the girl, he whispered to her that if she did not do as expected, she would die, to which the girl shuddered slightly. Having figured out what to do, she lightly ran towards the man, calling him daddy, reaching out to hug him. Hugging Marquis, who was slightly confused, ATI continued that she had not seen each other for so long. Already supporting such a ridiculous game, he spoke sparklingly, calling her his daughter, while she added that she missed her very much. The Marquis immediately examined the girl, honestly saying that it seemed to him that she had lost even more weight. Starting to feel sad, ATI said that yes, it was because she was very exhausted. Standing behind her, Adrian was a little surprised by such a phrase, that she was exhausted looking at it. ATI quickly corrected herself and said that she had nothing to worry about here. She also eats well. Awkwardly, the Marquis replied that apparently he was mistaken. Slightly shocked by such activity, the crowd looked at their relationship, whispering that they were so pleasant to watch, which the girl could not help but hear and feel. Standing away from the entire crowd, Adrian suddenly turned around and became worried. Immediately taking the girl's hand, she carefully turned to him, trying to mentally understand why the prince took her hand. Then the voice of Lady Gabrielle was heard from behind, which immediately addressed the prince, greeting his highness. ATI immediately understood the prince's concern because this girl was walking towards them. The man next to the girl approached the Marquis, greeting him, which Ati's dad also did. Noting that they had not seen each other for a long time, turning to him as His Excellency Mr. Chancellor. Hearing this greeting, ATI quickly realized that this man was Lady Gabrielle's father. Looking at Adrian, he continued to watch the girl, which was already causing her discomfort. Gabrielle quickly noticed that he was looking at her, slightly embarrassed, gasping in surprise. Blushing more, she began to say, as if boasting, that His Highness could not take his eyes off her. Turney, standing nearby, watching them, laughed slightly, advising the girl to look at the prince's face, while she mentally thought that it was a passionate look. Turning to the guy, she sharply noticed that there was no point in him looking at her like that, because in her heart there was only his highness. Frowning, Turney sternly asked what she was talking about, and ATI noticed that she made both the prince and the guy make such serious faces. Holding the girl by the shoulders, Adrian said that she was probably very tired, her legs hurt because she had been standing for so long. Looking at the Chancellor, he apologized, but for the sake of his bride, they need to quickly change the place so that they will see each other again next time. Holding ATI tighter to him, he told her to go, while Gabriel looked indignantly in their direction, trying to attract the attention of his highness. Moving to the sofas, the girl sat and exhaled in a relaxed manner that she was finally somewhat safe here. Diano soon came to them, who had been looking for them for a long time, which is why the prince was glad of his arrival, and also very timely. He immediately told the knight the task, to drive away the approaching people with a dissatisfied face, why, turning around, he said to eat, fulfilling his task. Leaning lightly on the back of the sofa, relaxing, mentally understanding that it was now quieter and calmer. The prince immediately looked at her, wanting to say something, when he was immediately interrupted by a voice calling him. Turning towards the voice, ATI awkwardly realized whose voice it was, not believing it. Gabriel was there at the entrance, so the girl mentally wondered if she had followed them all the way here on purpose. Clicking and walking towards the prince, she smugly told the knight that she also came here to rest, which is why he could not do anything. 
Standing opposite Lady Atienne, she directly asked what she had prepared for the birthday of Her Majesty the Empress. Then the girl remembered how Tierney had explained to her that his family would take care of the gift and give it on her behalf, and Adrian would give it with her, so she wouldn't have to worry. Looking at her, she directly said that she had prepared together with His Highness the Crown Prince this time, and later she was going to present a gift to the Empress separately. Here, Gabrielle decided to make a joke, saying that no matter how rare the girl's gift was, she was sure that it would be nothing compared to what she did. ATI awkwardly said that yes, to which Gabriel seemed indignant, blushing and angry. Adrian approached Dino and quietly asked how long it had been since the lady had made such a face while watching them. With her arms outstretched, Gabriel continued that there was nothing to be done about it, but since she was so interested, she would have to show it. Sitting awkwardly, ATI mentally didn't understand, because she didn't say anything. The lady said that the gift she had prepared was this, keeping the intrigue, snapping her fingers for the maid, who began to open the box. The box contained plates that Gabrielle presented as the work of Master Virgin, one of his sets of plates. While ATI looked at it, the girl continued that she must know that all his works were sold and were difficult to get. Carefully straightening the plates with her hands, Gabrielle noticed that Her Majesty has a hobby of collecting plates, and among them, she especially loves the works of Virgin. While ATI was remembering where she could see these plates, the lady took one of the plates in her hands, looking at the girl, continuing that getting these plates is nothing other than luck. Then ATI, looking at the plate in Gabrielle's hands, saw familiar initials, already completely confident in her thought. But she continued to silently watch Gabrielle, who was holding the plate as if showing off. Adrian approached her, carefully taking her by the shoulder, and advised her to simply ignore the one ATI agreed with. Having hidden the plate and closed the box, Gabrielle watched them with irritation, clenching her hands. Having already turned to the prince, she called his highness and beamed with her idea. Inspired, she began to say that she would be his partner in the first dance. Adrian, taking Adi's hand, leaned towards her, meeting their gazes, without listening to the lady. Leaning lower, he asked her if she would give him her first dance. This proposal confused the girl, which is why she looked at him, slightly hesitating with her answer. Looking at Gabrielle, she mentally asked herself if she would cry here. The lady noticed this look, sparkling with happiness, thinking and saying that she took such good care of her, fearing that she would be jealous of the other lady. Before she could finish, ATI shook her head negatively, not understanding what was going on in her head. Suddenly, Gabrielle came close to her, which made the girl feel awkward, trying to understand what it was. Then the lady blurted out that he who laughs last laughs best. Having said something dissatisfied, she turned away angrily and left, leaving ATI in some confusion. After remaining silent for some time, the prince asked if the girl was laughing, to which she honestly said no. Beautiful music and atmosphere in the hall were created by a musical corpse that sat and played classical music. They danced to this melody in the center of the hall, smoothly circling and looking at each other. ATI was incredibly embarrassed to be the center of attention, but there was no choice. Everyone was stepping into the center themselves, which is why the girl, worried, asked herself not to make a mistake. Noticing her anxiety, Adrian asked her to relax a little, with which the girl agreed. They continued their dance in the beautiful hall, while ATI was lost in thought, remembering her first classes. As a child, she stepped on the feet of her father and younger brother every time, mentally remembering her dad and Alan. As soon as she was distracted, she immediately stepped on the prince's foot, which instantly made ATI feel ashamed. Adrian only looked at her sternly, which only made the girl more anxious. Looking away, she realized with shame who she had stepped on, just as she did not understand why this was so. If during training she danced perfectly, why she squeezed his hand out of excitement. Having finished the dance, they stood aside while ATI silently looked at him, ashamed to say anything. As soon as Adrian wanted to tell her something, she distracted his attention by saying that she was trying to come up with something. Just then Deanna was passing by, which is what she said to his highness. Approaching them, the knight really had something to report, why he said it, and Adrian listened to him carefully. Then Deanna began that they say that Princess Marie had just returned to the palace, why did the prince inquire about the empress? Her majesty was in her place, which the knight conveyed to the prince. ATI, turning away, mentally realized that it seemed that they had forgotten that a little earlier she had stepped on his foot, which the prince could not help but notice. 
Diano added that Terni said that he would go to see off Marcus Ezef, which Adrian was even happy about. Out of the corner of his eye, the crown prince returned to the girl, slightly thinking about something of his own. Taking her by the shoulder, he exhaled and said that they would also go, which ATI was surprised by, mentally asking herself if it was possible to just up and leave like that. Not daring to ask, they were already walking along the night alley, going down the stairs to the fountain. Clicking her heels, ATI realized that having put on such high heels and even dancing in them, her feet hurt a lot, but she was silent about it. Before she knew it, she soon tripped, beginning to quickly fall backwards. Having closed her eyes in fear, the girl didn't understand why she wasn't falling, why she carefully opened her eyes. Her gaze immediately met the slightly worried gaze of Adrian, who caught and held her in his arms. Looking at him, listening to her heartbeat, ATI gradually blushed from the situation now. The prince simply asked if she could walk, lowering her onto the railing of the fountain. Lifting her dress, the girl said that she seemed to have sprained her ankle, which was soon confirmed. The crown prince was not surprised by this situation, looking at her. But in his thoughts, he justified, like a girl, that she was tired of walking because of walking in such high heels. Startled, he seemed to sense something as he watched her. ATI only carefully corrected her image, so that if anyone saw, everything would be in order. Sighing slightly sadly as his heart pounded, he realized that he had been enchanted by a mirage and nothing more. Looking at her, he felt as if he couldn't breathe, otherwise everything would disappear. Frozen as a pillar, he simply looked at the girl who enchanted her with her beauty. It was hard not to notice this look, which is why ATI awkwardly called out to him, trying to distract him from his thoughts. Adrian just twitched slightly and continued to stare. After being silent for a while, he looked down with a grin, realizing how ridiculous it was now. Returning his gaze to her, he mentally asked himself if he was possessed by a ghost. Tilting her head slightly as if examining him, ATI could not understand what had happened to the crown prince, noticing strange things. Putting her finger to her lips, she thought a little about why this could be, thinking that he might not like something, but she tried. Due to the wind, some drops from the fountain were blown into her back, causing the girl to turn around, looking. Holding her shoulders, she began to tremble slightly, realizing that it was colder outside and blushed slightly. Raising her head to the prince, ATI quietly called out to his highness. When he flinched because she called him, she voiced that they should return. Having examined the girl, Adrian understood that she was not feeling well, which is why he took her in his arms and agreed with her, leaving. Looking awkwardly at him, she only received a frown, which made her feel awkward. Turning away, ATI mentally thought that perhaps she would die today after all. The very next day, the crown prince sat gloomily at his desk, immersed in some thoughts. His friends were sitting in the hall with him, leafing through papers to the morning trills of birds. Turney raised his eyes and looked at Adrian, asking Diano if he knew what happened to his highness. The knight, looking at the prince, only shook his head, saying that he himself had no idea. Turney suggested that maybe it was because of the ball, although neither Her Majesty the Empress nor the other aristocrats said anything, and no one could guess that it was not Eason. So the ball was considered a success, but Diano asked about the progress in finding a guy. Turney explained that they were looking for him, but so far everything was in vain because every trace of him was a deception. Diano noticed how carefully this brat acts, asking if he really plans to be on the run all his life, to which Tierney said that he will return someday anyway, saying that since they had finished all their work, they slammed the door and left, leaving the prince alone in silence. He didn't seem to mind, communicating with himself in his thoughts, that when he closed his eyes, he saw the words that moment with the girl. Clasping his hands and leaning on the chair, he felt as if he was still standing there in place, wondering what had come over him. ATI lay in bed, looking at the ceiling and thinking, while the rays of the sun beat from the window. Looking out the window, only one thought flashed through her mind. What should she do now? The mood quickly changed due to the arrival of Madame Lucy, who loudly woke the girl up to get up quickly. ATI quietly apologized and asked how long she should continue to play the role of the bride, to which the groaning madame replied that until the return of the knight, Eason. The girl, slightly upset, mentally asked where he had gone because she was already quite tired. Then, unexpectedly, the maid said that ATI might not have waited for Eason, and that she could have taken the opportunity to seduce the crown prince, thus becoming a real bride, marrying him, which immediately presented this moment that ATI did not like very much, 
despite Lucy's review that His Highness was very kind. Sitting in the bathroom, the girl thought a little about the idea of a real bride that Lucy proposed. She was especially surprised that the maid said that he was a kind person. Remembering how he picked her up despite the stern look, ATI really thought that it might have been some kindness. Having finished the procedures, she went out into the hall to her room, but the man who came slightly surprised her. His Highness was sitting on the sofa waiting, but he obviously did not immediately notice ATI, which is why she called him. He, startled by her voice, instantly examined her image, awkwardly asking what kind of clothes she was wearing. The girl looked at him in slight surprise, not quite understanding what he was talking about, but looking down, she realized that her clothes were translucent, which is why she quickly ran into the wardrobe apologetically. Slightly irritated by the wait, Adrian quickly responded to the steps, already looking towards their creator. Awkwardly apologizing for the wait, ATI changed into a beautiful dress, which looked wonderful. Without even having time to think about this expression on his face, the prince stood up and approached her, openly looking down at her. Leaning over, ATI caught herself thinking that his gaze had become scarier, but looking back, she awkwardly called him, wanting to ask. Immediately turning around, Adrian silently left, leaving the girl in some misunderstanding. Following him with his gaze to the door as soon as she slammed ATI awkwardly, asked herself what that just happened. The thought immediately flashed through that she might be under gunpoint, which slightly embarrassed her. In the hall, the prince was already discussing with the man that he had been seeing all sorts of devilish things lately, and whether he was okay. He modestly replied that perhaps this was due to severe stress, why it was better to reduce the load and rest. Putting his hand to his forehead, Adrian mentally said that if he could feel better from rest, he would not ask at all what irritated him more. Only by answering unimportantly did he drive the man away, to which he silently bowed and walked away. Immediately, papers fell into the eyes of the crown prince, and he immediately remembered that ATI was a maid, as if it had dawned on him while reading this. Only after putting everything in place, he mentally went to the girl, deciding that if he continued to watch her, he would probably receive at least some answer. In the garden, he was the first to meet Lucy, who was very surprised by his arrival at such an early hour. While he was approaching, the maid asked what he was doing here, but he only came closer. Then a thought flashed through Madame Lucy's mind, which she immediately said that he had probably come to see Atien, which made her very happy. The words that he finally liked the girl made him frown, looking displeased at the maid. Despite this, Lucy felt that he was embarrassed by asking about it, as if in a mocking way about their future wedding. Adrian, not appreciating such jokes about a summer wedding, stood silently, mentally asking what kind of damn wedding was this, because from the very beginning he had no intention of getting married, even after becoming emperor. Madame Lucy continued to fly with thoughts about their wedding, always asking what and how it would be, but her excitement was interrupted by the prince. The maid groaning asked what the cutie crown prince had. Adrian asked if she still hadn't forgotten this nickname, to which Lucy said that it conveyed all her love for him. Clearing his throat, distracting the girl, he said that he was here because he was interested in something, which is why she was all ears listening to him. Awkwardly looking away, he admitted that he was here because of her, wondering what the maid did to the girl's face and the day of celebration for the birth. Lucy, looking at him, instantly fell silent and froze in surprise. Laughing, the maid continued that the prince had really fallen in love with the lady's appearance, with which he disagreed. Madame continued about the guy's embarrassment, to which he turned away and said that it didn't matter and was already leaving. Realizing his seriousness, Lucy quickly said that it was all Adi's beauty, and she only did a little magic. This interested the crown prince, why he turned around and asked what it meant to cast a spell. Lucy explained that if you look at the lady furtively, she may seem ordinary, but in fact, she is like a canvas that is waiting to be made into a masterpiece. So no matter what color she dressed ATI, everything suited her, and the girl herself only shone stronger. Taking his eyes away from the maid, Adrian said silently that even so, Eason was more beautiful. Madame Lucy agreed with the prince, because they cannot be compared. Eason was magnificent, which is why the prince caught himself thinking that he was disgusted to hear this. But the girl continued that it was nice to dress up a lady, because it felt useful. Listening to her, the girl only added that she was very pleased with herself and was only more pleased with the opportunity to dress a lady which slightly surprised the crown prince.
which is why he joyfully said that he would count on her in the future. ATI was sitting in the room reading a book when someone knocked on her door, which made her a little nervous. Rising, leaving the book and her place, she began to greet the man who had come, slightly embarrassed when she saw who it was. His Highness the Crown Prince came to see her, and she greeted him with hesitation. He silently began to walk towards her, while the girl was in some surprise and misunderstanding. Having already arrived at the tight spot, Adrian looked at her from above as if glaring askance, straining her. Laughing awkwardly, she looked back at him, smiling slightly stupidly. Standing there, A.T.I. slightly didn't understand what it was, much less she didn't believe herself that she thought it was so cute. Immediately, the crown prince asked her to go out for a minute, to which the girl immediately began to leave. But he quickly changed his mind, telling her to come back, which she did without question. Adrian awkwardly thought she was cute, but without showing it, he simply asked her to sit there, pointing back to her place. Tui, sitting down, Atiai awkwardly asked if it was necessary, looking up at him, still not understanding what was happening. Hearing the beating of his heart, he watched her frozen, because what happened at the fountain happened to him again. Clutching her chest in the area of her heart, the girl quickly noticed this, asking his highness, but his steps towards her interrupted the question. Under the thought that A.T.I. looked like a little bird, scolding himself for this, he abruptly turned around and went out without saying anything. Turney came to the door, wanting to meet the girl, so he called her from the threshold, but was interrupted by the prince passing by. Turning to him, he quietly called out to Adrian, but he grabbed his head and simply moved on, later howling. Turney, not understanding anything, directly asked what was wrong with them, scratching his temples. Having gathered with Diano and A.T.I., Turney began, perhaps after all, interrupting. But folding his hands, he sadly said that the girl seemed to be facing death soon. Looking at the guy in horror, she directly asked why and why this was happening, immediately tensed up. Turney immediately told her to think about how Adrian had behaved in recent days. A.T.I. did began to remember that he could suddenly enter the room and glare at her. Or he stood somewhere in the corner and watched her askance, which gave me goosebumps. At every meeting, he sighed heavily when he saw the girl, as if he was not hiding it. A.T.I. hit the table, dissatisfied, mentally understanding that if he was somehow dissatisfied with her, he could simply say so. But he just glares at her and leaves, which left many questions. Upset, leaning on her hands, hiding her face, she whined slightly, which Diano noticed. Thoughtful, the knight said that it was still worth thinking about escaping. It would be better for the girl. Taking the cookie, Turney said that it was still very strange, because this was the first time he had seen the prince behave like this while eating. Adding that then there was definitely no mistake, he could go crazy with anger, with which Diano agreed with a nod. Turney directly asked to what extent A.T.I. had committed a serious offense that he had been behaving like this for several days, which is why the girl interrupted him by shouting enough. She directly asked what she needed to do to survive, because that was what she was most interested in. Both guys, looking at her, unanimously answered that they were still planning an escape, to which A.T.I. mentally asked that there really was no other way. Jumping up from his seat, Turney quickly said that he then left wishing the girl good luck and to try harder. The girl, looking at the plate of cookies, mentally cursed the guy because she was sure that he had just come to eat the local cookies. The day was approaching evening, and the girl, spinning around, got a little lost on the street, remembering that Lucy told her that it was somewhere close. At that moment, she clearly asked what she said, that every time she walked towards the backyard so she needed to visit the front one, if it didn't take a lot of belts, then everything would be fine. Freezing in place, A.T.I. asked out loud where the garden was, because there was nothing in front of her. I again remembered the navigator from Madame Lucy, who told her to get out and go straight, and there she would immediately see the garden, which is why the girl did not understand where, because it should be in front. Suddenly, someone's voices were heard in the silence, why A.T.I. turned to him and realized that it was a conversation. Delighted by this opportunity, she decided to simply walk up and ask for directions back. Already running towards the conversation, she wanted to apologize, but was immediately interrupted. It was clearly a personal meeting, where the girl said with bated breath that she then understood. Falling silent. Hiding around the corner, A.T.I. tried to understand what the atmosphere was here because it was clearly felt. The girl, gathering her thoughts, loudly said that she liked the guy, whom she called Mr. Mikkel. A.T.I. watched in amazement, covering her mouth. 
realizing that she had accidentally witnessed the confession, thinking that she just needed to quietly leave here. The girl persistently asked why he did not answer, asking him to accept her feelings. The guy just lowered his head and awkwardly apologized to her. Seeing him, ATI looked at him in amazement, mentally saying, wow, and understanding why the girl fell in love with him. The same girl, whimpering, ran away from him, who considered his answer rude while the guy looked after her. Sad, he suddenly turned exactly towards ATI as if looking at her. Startled by his gaze, she quickly hid behind the wall, mentally trying to understand whether he had really just looked in that direction. Without even having time to understand, the guy began to walk in her direction, which the girl, of course, saw, not knowing what to do. As soon as he approached, before she could say anything, she screamed that she didn't like him, blushing and turning away. Not understanding her, the guy awkwardly asked what looking. At that same second, ATI, closing her eyes, ran away in the other direction, and the guy didn't have time to stop her either with his hand or with a word, wait. Looking in her direction, he stopped and began to explain that perhaps she had misunderstood him. Realizing that she had already left, the guy asked himself with interest whether he could meet her again. In the evening, the guy was with the crown prince, giving him a report from the delegation sent this time, which the prince read. Without raising his eyes, Adrian told him that the distance was very far, because he thought that he had suffered while rolling back and forth. Having already put the papers aside, he praised Mikael for his continued work, looking at him. He also said that since he returned today, he could rest for a day and provide reports after that, which surprised the guy. The guy was very surprised, because usually he immediately ordered him to leave immediately after a conversation, but only bowed and said that it would be easier to rest after handing over the work, which is why he thanked his majesty for his concern. Coming out, the guy thought a little that although this was a small change in the prince, he spoke, watching the expression on his face. More than five months have passed since he left with a delegation to another country, but something has changed a lot during this time. Realizing that Gabriel, having found out, would obviously make a big noise, which was clearly not necessary for anyone, Adrian was sitting with his sister in the garden, who asked him if this was love. The crown prince took the mug and asked again, considering what kind of nonsense she was talking about. Resting her chin, the girl, stirring her tea, asked ambiguously what kind of horse it was that the prince had become like this. The same one, not understanding what kind of horse it was, introduced it, frowning more. The sister said that he always suffered when a horse appeared that he wanted to make his own, asking which one this time, suggesting that it was really Popter's horse, which the prince wanted to take for himself, but it died. Then a realization came to him, which is why Adrian asked that in her opinion, he behaved the same way when he wanted a horse. Immediately she asked in response, if anything, besides horses, what could he feel that way about, calling him brother? The guy just asked her to close her mouth, while the girl was wondering why he was doing this again. After thinking a little, he realized that he needed time to decide everything. Immediately imagining ATI, feeling the same feeling as before, he mentally asked himself if it was really how he was interrupted. Waving in front of his face, the sister asked if he was listening to her, already a little angry at his ignoring. She loudly demanded that her maid be returned to her, which made the guy flinch as he looked at her. The girl immediately noticed that he ignored her every time the conversation about her maid came up, but the prince sat silently. Immediately, the thought came to him that maybe he had fallen in love, at which he was even slightly horrified. Then the empress approached them, wondering why her son and daughter were waiting for her so calmly. The girl quickly attracted attention, explaining that it seemed that her brother was again carried away by the new horse, because he said that he was tormented all day long because of her remembering and immediately rushing from side to side why she was sure that he was talking about the new horse. Thinking a little, the empress turned her head towards the prince, gently calling him. She said that in the stable there were already 2,000 of the prince's horses alone, standing in the corral and waiting for him. That's why his mother asked what her new horse was like, which is why the guy grabbed his head, trying to explain that everything was completely wrong. My sister immediately intervened, assuring me that he said that he thinks about her all day long. It's like a fever of love, which my mother then agreed with, answering that he doesn't ride all his favorite horses. You need to know when to stop. Jumping up, the prince said more loudly that this was all wrong, deciding to simply leave, which is what the first did. 
Looking in his direction, the Empress asked her daughter if he was really suffering so much. Apparently, he really had found a horse that he liked. An irritated Adrian left, mentally reasoning that this all happened because of Eason's escape. And if he returns, then the strange phenomenon will disappear. This must be the case, why he obliged himself to catch him. A.T.I. was able to walk to the garden today, but spinning around herself, she was a little worried. It turned out that this time she got lost inside him and stood in place, drooping. Wherever the girl went, she always returned in a circle, which is why, when she wanted to meet someone, she immediately noticed. There was a human silhouette near the fountain, which made A.T.I. very happy. Heading towards him, she quietly began to wonder if she could ask for directions, when she immediately became awkwardly silent. The silhouette belonged to the guy she met yesterday, because she was already worried that he would notice that she was Ashien. Why did she turn around and quickly leave, deciding to simply return along the road along which she came here? Even so, she still managed to meet him, already watching in a little surprise. Silently, but looking shockingly, she did not understand how, because she was walking in the opposite direction. Looking at the girl, the guy himself immediately recognized her, wanting to say something. A.T.I., turning away and leaving, laughed awkwardly, saying that it seemed that this was not here. Because of the speed, she stepped on a stone, but the guy immediately caught her, which surprised both of them. After being silent for a while, he decided to ask if the girl was okay, looking with concern. Having twitched, she immediately straightened up, embarrassedly answering that everything was fine, stuttering, but thanking her. Standing, she noticed that her veil was missing, but it seems that the guy didn't know that she was the bride of the crown prince, why she decided to ask him for directions, saying that she needed to go to Lily's palace, which surprised him, but he agreed. He quickly escorted her out, for which the girl thanked him, awkwardly asking how she should address him. Smiling, the guy happily said that she could call him Mikkel. Raising her head to him, A.T.I. wanted to say her name when someone called her as a mistress. Mikael, deciding not to disturb her, left, hoping for their future meeting. A.T.I. thought in her mind that they wouldn't have any more reasons to meet, so maybe it wasn't that important. The girl was already sitting with Turney in the office, silently thinking about something. The guy noticed this, so he asked what was bothering his sister while chewing on cookies. A.T.I. honestly said that she wanted to personally present the gift to Her Majesty the Empress, wondering whether she would like it if she gave her a plate. Tierney interrupted her, leaned over and asked what the plate was. He immediately told her not to even think about it, because Her Majesty has incredibly high standards, and everything will be useless unless she is at the level of Master Virgen. A.T.I. said that there would be no need to worry about this, as if smiling slyly. The guy noticed this, wondering what kind of self-confidence the girl had in this regard. She hesitated a little, looking away, trying to figure out what to say. The topic was immediately found. Why, she immediately asked, because she would need to leave the castle for a while, whether his majesty would allow it. The guy instantly replied that he thought not while eating. A.T.I. immediately sank because of this thought, asking again that, yes, most likely he wouldn't let her in. While the guy was staring at her, she sadly realized that she needed to find a gift to give to the Empress. Immediately, he told A.T.I. to raise her head, which she did with a slight shudder. Beating his chest, Turney asked her who he was, to which she mentally replied that he was a fool. Taking A.T.I. by the hand, he said that he was her brother, and he would take responsibility and lead her outside. Sitting collected in the carriage, the girl awkwardly asked whether it was possible to go so far. Tierney said confidently that, of course, it was a little exciting. Only then did he correct himself, which of course means that of course it's impossible, which clearly irritated her. Having said that there was no need to joke like that, because Adrian could really kill her, she immediately added that as soon as they returned, she would kneel down and beg for forgiveness. Looking at her sternly, he asked if the girl had any pride at all. Blushing slightly, she instantly answered no. Then the guy said that he didn't have one either, so they would pray together. Arriving quite quickly, Turney immediately realized that this was the Rentry region, the place of residence of commoners, wondering why they came here. Having answered that A.T.I. had business here, he did not let up, clarifying that they had come to buy a gift for Her Majesty the Empress, hadn't they? The girl turned to him and awkwardly asked him to just follow her. Soon they stopped at a building, which she looked at with a smile, which the guy did not understand. Standing opposite the door, Turney asked what kind of barn this was, which greatly outraged him, angrily answering him that it was rude because a person lived here. 
After knocking for some time, no one opened the door to the girl. Why the guy assumed that there was no one there, to which she clearly replied that this was not the case. Then he offered his help in knocking, because perhaps ATI was doing it too quietly. But before she had time to stop him, the guy started banging on the door. Having opened the door from there, the now enraged man began to shout that what kind of damn idiot started banging on the door of someone else's house in broad daylight. Hearing the girl's voice that called him Uncle Helmer, he quickly cooled down, looking at her. Smiling, ATI looked at him, and the man himself joyfully recognized Lara in the girl. In the house, they were sitting opposite each other, where the girl began that they had not seen each other for a long time, asking if the uncle had stopped drinking. Looking away, the man cleared his throat and said that Hans, his neighbor, always had no one to drink with, but admitted under the girl's sidelong glance that he was doing something bad. Helmer immediately remembered that he had heard that she had become a maid at the Imperial Palace, asking how she got out, to which she awkwardly replied that she had received permission and everything was fine. Immediately, the man pointed at Turney, rudely asking who that person was then. Here, A.T.I. hoped that he would not call himself her brother, saying that he was a man whom she recognized completely by chance. But he, coming up and taking the chair, wanted to say it himself. Pointing to himself, he loudly said that he was Lara's older brother, while the girl mentally begged him to use his brain. Without saying anything, Helmer told him that he was her father's best friend even before A.T.I. was even born, menacingly saying that Lara has no brother, which is why both of them twitched, looking at him. Looking away, the girl understood why her uncle was so furious. Before the destruction of her family, he was the main craftsman in her and the best friend of not only her father, but also their entire family. While for the girl there was a sudden loss of her family, for her uncle it meant the loss of her best friend, which is why talking about her family was like a nagging wound for him. Wanting to defuse the situation, Turney approached the man and shook his hand, telling him not to worry because he would become Lara's older brother and make sure that she was happy all her life. Grabbing him back, he took him away and said that, apparently, he was a reveler from a rich family which offended the guy. Having kicked him out the door, he accompanied him so that he would not bother Lara and would better get out of here, slamming the door. Turney began to try to enter, asking on the other side to open, which embarrassed A.T.I. Helmer directly asked if that guy threatened her, to which she honestly said that he was helping her in the palace. Although he didn't believe it, saying that he didn't seem like that, the girl claimed that he was really a good person and kind. Despite the fact that the uncle did not believe it, A.T.I. let him in, while Tierney quietly whined that he really was Ati's brother, but this uncle says all sorts of nasty things to him. The girl looked up and looked at the man, calling him and asking if he continued making the plates. Clenching his hands, he rudely said that, of course, he had nothing special to do. Then A.T.I. asked, it means as before, he breaks them, wasting everything. The uncle just stood gloomily and said that it was all just a marriage. The girl was surprised by this expression, asking how this could be a marriage. Looking at him, she asked him not to say that because it was not true. Grabbing his head, he began to say that she herself knew everything well too. What happened to her parents was because of, but A.T.I. interrupted him by squeezing his hand in her palms. Frowning at her gaze, he called quietly to her, falling silent. Distracting, she asked if she could take a plate there showing while her uncle was wondering why she needed it, while she came up with the idea that she wanted to use them in the palace, because she liked his plates. Looking away, he said that there was obviously something in the workshop. He would throw everything away anyway, so she could take everything, which is why she thanked him happily. Already walking between the shelves, Tierney said that it was the first time he had seen a plate workshop, asking that the guy was actually a plate artist, to which A.T.I. said yes. Having looked at one, the guy asked if the girl really wanted to give one of them to Her Majesty, continuing that he had already said that she would not succeed if they were not at the level of Master Virgen, that that man was really an outstanding master. While he was chatting, A.T.I. found a plate, wiped it, reassuring him that everything was fine, because he was not the majority. Then Turney himself saw the initials of Master Virgen on the plate, being in sincere shock. The girl motioned for him to be silent, looking sternly, to which the guy instantly calmed down. A.T.I. turned her gaze back to the plate, admiring it and deciding. She honestly remembered that when she first heard the name of Master Virgin, she did not know that it was Uncle Helmer, 
because everyone knew him by his last name, not his first name. She learned who he was when she saw the initials on Gabriel's plate, remembering that moment. Putting the plate to her chest, she bashfully did not understand how she could not have known that it was the signature of her uncle, who was like her godfather. As she put the plate on the table to pack it, out of the corner of her eye she saw broken pieces of dishes on the floor. Having said that he breaks them like this, so of course he could not sell his products. But why he broke them? There were already reasons for this. Looking back at Turney, ATI asked if she should take it and go, to which the guy asked if she was going to take everything. Why did she say that otherwise they would be broken? It was better to take it. Then suddenly the guy stared at her strangely. Why she asked what? Not understanding why he was looking so strangely. Sparkling with joy, he asked to take just one plate for himself, smiling. Already tapping her on the shoulder, asking for a plate, he promised that if she gave just one, he would forgive her for heartlessly driving him away a little earlier. But the girl was too lazy. But having agreed, she only set the condition that when they left, he will behave quietly, to which the guy quickly agrees. An uncle stood at the exit from the workshop, wondering if ATI had done everything she wanted. He rudely said that if she was finished, then let her leave quickly, while she looked at him in bewilderment. ATI smiled at him, thinking that yes, even though his style of speech was rude, most likely he did not want me to come back late and get scolded. Approaching him, she directly said that Helmer's works were not a waste at all, which is why he remained silent. She added that it was not his fault that she was left alone, with which he clearly did not agree. ATI, without listening, continued that she would be glad if he continued to create beautiful plates as before. As she was leaving, she said goodbye to him, asking only to drink less, but also smiling brightly. Helmer only warned her not to go too far. As soon as the door closed, her uncle immediately approached her, calling Lara, and she turned around and listened to him. He said that if it was too hard for her and there was nowhere to go, he would always be here, because he could feed her alone. ATI was incredibly flattered by such an offer, thanking him, smiling. Adrian, mentally walking and looking for a girl, came to the gym. He was already angrily trying to understand where ATI had gone because he had not been warned of anything. Diana was working in the hall, why, when the prince met him, he directly asked where Turney was, to which he only received the guy's surprise. Assuming that he had gone to ATI, the crown prince immediately said that he was not there, which shocked the knight. Having added that there were no two, Diano immediately had a thought, which the prince saw, realizing that the guy knew something. Uncertainly, he said that the prince had recently only looked at the lady and left, why the girl asked them for advice on this matter, and of course they gave it. He asked directly what they told her. Adrian somehow became more tense, replying that they told her to better plan her escape. The prince sharply hit the nearest mannequin, which slightly scared Diano. Looking after him, it even seemed to him that he had a slightly crazy look. Walking out into the garden, he couldn't understand how she could escape if they hadn't even found Essen yet. But even so, whether he returned or not, the prince had no intention of letting her go. Freezing, he soon met a girl who awkwardly asked if this majesty was waiting here for him. Looking at her, he mentally did not understand why, until that moment he had been so angry that it seemed that he could go crazy. But now, with a quick step, he almost jumped up to the girl and hugged her, pressing her to him, realizing that, what a blessing, she didn't run away. ATI was somewhat perplexed by Adrian's behavior and why she tried to find out. The crown prince, pressing her tighter, only quietly asked where she had gone. The girl immediately admitted that she wanted to get a gift for Her Majesty the Empress, but she had to come out, that she was very sorry about it, apologizing. Pushing her away from him, Adrian awkwardly mentally did not understand why just hearing her voice made his mood improve. Without showing any signs of tenderness, he only frowned at her, causing ATI to shudder. Watching with some fear, she realized that this was his ferocious expression. Immediately lowering her eyes, ATI stuttered that if he punished her, she would accept everything, which the prince did not understand. Having said that he was not going to ask her, he saw Turney, realizing that if there was another person who needed to be killed. Sitting in the office, the guy was already whining under the window, drooping, not understanding what he had done so bad. Realizing that Tierney did not repent at all, he began rustling something in his jacket. He immediately found his plate, looking at it admiringly, rejoicing. Turning to him that very second, Adrian asked what it was. Showing him the plate, he seemed to mockingly ask if this was so interesting to him, but it was interesting, 
to which the prince only maliciously thought that it seemed that he wanted to receive more punishment, beginning to be proud that ATI gave this to him, only to him, especially, which is why the prince twitched slightly. Looking at him, he mentally swore that this idiot had stolen his first exit from the palace with ATI, and also received a gift. But he hadn't received anything yet, so he approached him from behind and snatched his plate while Tierney was at a loss. Immediately turning to him, he demanded it back, as well as warning that if he broke it, ATI would be sad, which made Adrian shudder at the mere thought of it. After looking at the dishes, he only stepped aside and said that he would confiscate them while Tierney was in shock.